Campbell. Let's send you to that right now. In Tampa, to call the game, Joel Myers and Ahmad Rashad. It's Illinois against Clemson. See you later, everybody. Only one team this year knocked off the top-ranked team in the nation. It was the fighting Illini of the University of Illinois. Coming from behind in the final minute to beat the Colorado Buffaloes. And quarterback Jason Verdusco feels that was the key to what's been a very successful season. I think the Colorado game was the turning point of our season. I think we all came together as a team. I think we played very well. I think that was the turning point of the season. Illinois running back Howard Griffith had a record-breaking year, bringing back memories of the galloping ghost, Red Grange. The top defensive unit in college football resides in Clemson, South Carolina, and linebacker LaVon Kirkland is ready for the Tigers' biggest test of the season. They're going to be a quality team, and um, we're going to really be challenged. Our number one defense is really going to be challenged against Illinois. The Stalking Tigers are set to pounce on Verdusco and the Fighting Illini. This afternoon, we're in sunny Tampa, Florida for the fifth annual Hall of Fame Bowl in the very first matchup between the Fighting Illini of the University of Illinois and the Tigers of Clemson University. And the weather is like it's been all week long. Absolutely perfect. Game time temperature, 85 degrees in the forecast for more of the same. Good afternoon, everybody, and Happy New Year. I'm Joel Myers, alongside Ahmad Rashad, and welcome to Tampa. The representatives of the Atlantic Coast Conference, the Clemson Tigers, bring in a record of 9-2, while from the Big Ten, the University of Illinois comes in at 8-3. Ahmad, I think this game definitely falls under the category of something's got to give. Clemson owns the number one defensive unit in the nation, while Illinois averages 400 yards a game of offense and a great passing attack as well. Yeah, I think when you think about the Clemson Tigers, the first thing you think about is that tough defense that they have, and they have really made their reputation on stopping the run. Today, they will have their hands full because the Illinois fighting Illini over there, John McAvitt has as sophisticated a passing game as you will ever see at any level of football, and they, uh, Clemson will have to stop this passing offense if they hope to be successful. Now, Clemson has not had to throw the ball all that often this year. Their offensive attack predicated upon the ground game. They are ninth best in the nation at running the ball. The ultimate, the objective for Illinois, get an early lead. That's exactly right, because they, uh, Clemson does not throw the ball very well. What they like to do is have ball control, keep the ball the entire game, and then they get down, and their offense really comes from a punter kicker by the name of Chris Gardaki. Now, when it comes to talk about punting and kicking, you and I cannot talk about it very much, but we have a man on the sideline who I have spent many years working the sideline with him. That is Paul McGuire. Let's go down to Paul. Hey, thank you, Ahmad, and happy New Year to everyone. Chris Gardani not only is a great field goal kicker and an excellent punter, but most importantly, when he kicks off, he gets the ball into the end zone. This is the young man I'm talking about right behind me. And let me tell you something. He's a junior. He may come out if he's picked in the first or second round. But if he does come out next year, which he will as a senior, he will be drafted number one as a field goal kicker, number two as a punter, and number three as a kickoff man. So he'll get three contracts and save three spots on the team. Lamont? <laughs> All right, Paul. <laughs> and if he can catch, geez, that'd be four spots on the roster. <laughs> well, now we've got it straight since we checked in with Mr. McGuire. It is a beautiful day in Tampa, Florida. Both Clemson and Illinois in bowl games last year. Illinois in their ninth bowl game, a 4-4 four four record. Last year, they beat Virginia in the Citrus Bowl by 10 points. While well, the Clemson Tigers... Also came out victorious last year, and there's the head coach, John McAvick, of the Illini Amon. A lot of talk surrounding John McAvick and the possibility of a head coaching position in New England. And we, I talked to John about it a little bit this week, and it's all just rumor. And he said he hasn't been contacted by anybody, uh, but he certainly is available to listen. He is one of the fine coaches in this profession, and I think that he would be successful whatever he, he plans on doing. But what a great atmosphere here, Joel, huh? college football boy they got bands they got i mean it's so exciting it, it's it's unlike any other sporting event that i've ever been around this is the sixth straight bowl game for the clemson tigers they won last year over west virginia in the gator bowl they come in ken hatfield's group with a four game bowl winning streak and this is the ninth straight year that ken Hatfield has taken a team to a bowl game as well in his first year as the clemson tigers head coach the last six seasons at the university of arkansas and in his last two years at the air force academy took that group to a couple of bowls as well. 
Thomas and Ryan's back deep, waiting for the kickoff. For the University of Illinois, Corey Wells has it teed up at the 35. The freshman from Delville, Illinois, gets it underway in the fifth annual Hurricane Bowl. It'll be taken by Doug Thomas. He's across the 10. And a solid return. He's wrestled down finally at the 27-yard line. The offensive line for the Clemson Tigers, Bratton, Flesh, Mike Brown getting the start. The regular starting center, Curtis Whitley, not in there. It'll be interesting when we see that matchup with Moe Gardner, the nose tackle for the Fighting Illini, Eric Harmon, and Stacey Long on the right side. The consensus All-American in the backfield is Sean Cameron. He started every game this year. Great option quarterback, Hall and Williams, also in there. And the pitch to the freshman, the ACC Rookie of the Year, Ronald Williams, across the 30 to the 31 for a gain of four on first down. Brought down by Bill Henkel, the inside linebacker for the Fighting Illini. Up front, Walker, Gardner, and Agee, a very solid group for the Fighting Illini. Pulaski, Bryce, Brownlow, and Henkel. Watch Derek Brownlow, number 48. He is the emotional leader for that defensive unit. Green, Jones, Parker, and Primus, a very, very good group in the secondary. Second and six for Clemson. As we're just underway. And a play action. Back to Sean Cameron. We'll get a couple of yards, maybe three. Make it two. Out of bounds at the 33-yard line. They will certainly keep Illinois off guard by running plays like that because Deshaun Cameron, his strength is really, he's a magician with that ball, but in terms of passing the ball, he hasn't thrown many passes and they do not come in here saying we're going to pass. Their strength is when they run the ball. They like to give that ball to Ronald Williams who reminds me a lot of a lot of great running backs in the National Football League, but Tony Dorsett comes to mind. David, 40% of their third down conversions. And they'll try to get it with a pass. And it's over the middle for the freshman Terry Smith. The leading receiver for the Tigers with the first first down of the contest, a completion of 17 yards. And watching this uh, Clemson team work in practice, they have some fine wide receivers. They just had not really had them in the game plan. But right now, you see Cameron backing up, looking for Smith all the way on a little break-in pattern right over the middle and throws a nice ball and a nice catch there. There is Terry Smith, 6'1", 180, a freshman. They've got a lot of youngsters at the talent spots. The pass to Doug Thomas, it's complete. Close to another first down, and Ahmad, this has to be a surprise to the Illinois defensive unit. This has got to open things up for the Clemson, Clemson ground game. Without question. I mean, this is something that Illinois thought that, that Clemson couldn't do, but we watched Doug Thomas work here, a little just stop route. Those are safe patterns. You don't have people running all across the defensive secondary. You just run down there seven, eight yards and turn around. That should be a gimme. So it's a first down for the Tigers. Doug Thomas, a senior from Hamlet, North Carolina. The ACC indoor champion in the 55 meters and a member of Clemson's ACC championship four by 100 meter relay team. So speed to burn for Doug Thomas at the wideout position. Ronald Williams cutting it back. Not much available up the middle. It appears that they're really paying a lot of attention now to Mo Gardner. The nose tackle as Williams gets a couple. As we look at Mo Gardner, he has that nice stance. Joe Green used to make this thing popular where he'd take a little cockeyed stance on the center. But watch him get triple teamed here. Everybody is blocking Mo Gardner as they run right past him. But you've got to pay attention to him because he is so quick at that nose guard position that he causes a lot of havoc in the middle of the offense. Just about three on the carry for Williams. An impressive start for the Clemson offense. And it's second and seven inside Illinois territory at the Illini 38. The delay for Ronald Williams. Michael got him around the ankles. Cleaning up out of the secondary, Marlon Primus. But a good job by Bill Hankel, the senior from Decatur, Illinois. Second leading tackler on the team. One of the hardest workers on the squad, Got Williams. Ronald Williams is a guy that you don't want to let get too far outside. This is just a delayed draw. You see they take the ball now. They're trying to just contain him. He tries to break it outside. But excellent defensive work by this Illinois football team. Well, they just swarm Williams. And don't give him any way to any room to run. No gain on the carry. Caught it third and seven. They just converted on a key third down to get into Illinois territory. Deshaun Cameron throwing once again. He's got a man. It's complete for the first down to Terry Smith. He broke all of Clemson's freshman receiving records. 
for catches and yardage and by a good margin in both categories. I said that they had some excellent receivers and watch this route that he runs here. This is an excellent route. He runs a little curl route, number 24. Now watch him come back to the ball. Comes right back to the ball. Just an excellent route and an excellent throw. Not only are they catching Illinois off guard, they're catching us off guard because I expect them to come in here and run, but Cameron much better on the drop back pass than he is in the rollout. Cameron has completed 48% of his passes over the course of the season. He is very, very sharp so far. Jordan behind the receiver and almost intercepted. In the secondary, Marlon Primus was there. Cameron now three of four, a total of 37 yards. Primus the free safety. Young man from Los Angeles out of Carson High School. And he was trying to hit Larry Rines, who is a nephew of the great John Gilliam, who played at Minnesota and New, New Orleans. It's a chip off the old block there. He's also a speed burner. So Clemson throwing the ball frequently, now facing a second and ten. At the Illinois 27-yard line, no score. Just about four minutes gone by in the first quarter. An official's timeout. What a curveball from Ken Hatfield. His team comes into the game ninth in the country, rushing the ball for an average of 255 yards a game. Well, at the 25-second clock did not start. We will reset the 25-second clock. There is no penalty. John Sophie, our referee for today's fifth annual Hall of Fame Bowl. One of the things, Joel, that, that happens here when you have a, a running team that comes in throwing the ball. Start. We will reset the 25-second clock. There is no penalty. <laughs> he finishes his point. Is that you, you end up losing, loosening up the, the defensive linebackers. They have to all of a sudden start playing pass. Once they start to do that, then your running attack can start to take effect. You've got to open things up. Tigers facing the second and ten. They've got three first downs after starting this drive back at their own 27. And all three have come through the air. Williams is the motion man on second and ten. And again, another pass for Deshaun Cameron. The receiver wrapped open. Doug Thomas has it. It's another Tiger first down. Quentin Parker, the strong safety, the first bit over there. I watched these guys work last week, these receivers for Clemson, and, and even though they had the reputation of not throwing the ball very well, they got a group of receivers that could play anywhere. You'll just watch this uh, a rollout by Cameron where he has a chance to throw it to one of two receivers. On the outside, he's got Doug Thomas, just a little breakout pattern, puts the ball right there. Excellent play. And he had a good 8 to 10 yard cushion. So the pass. Playing up big for Clemson. Ronald Williams. Good lateral pursuit. Marlon Primus, the free safety, coming up to finally make the hit. Marlon Primus, one of the finest athletes that I've ever seen. They took a trip to Bush Gardens this past week, and they have the little thing where you shoot the baskets in and they give you stuffed animals. Marlon Primus cleaned the joint out. <laughs> well, Marlon, he, he had to have three of his teammates help him carry all the Bears home. Los Angeles native making his way uh, to Champaign-Urbana. And actually from Banning High School, the same high school that produced Vince Ferragamo. Marlon's only played for Vince's brother there, Chris Ferragamo. Second, close to eight. Again for Williams. Tough running. He's down to the ten. Where he's short of the first down by four yards. Mo Gardner in on the stop. Mo Gardner plays that nose tackle almost like a linebacker in there because he, he is as good against the run as he is against the pass. He's always so active. He's not a very big fellow, 258 pounds. If he hopes to play that position in professional football, he'll have to put on another body, gain about 40 pounds. But he is very active, very quick. So a third and four. It's the option. And it's a first down for Deshaun Cameron, weaving his way inside the five of the four-yard line. An exceptional start offensively for the Clemson offense. This play, if the, you have the right quarterback running, and it, it's almost an unstoppable play. He has all kind of options. He can pitch it to Williams. All of a sudden, here he comes. He finds the hole, ducks inside. Now he shows his running ability by finding a little crack and keep going forward for positive yardage. But... You just have to cover so many people. You've got the fullback there he can fake to. You've got the halfback running around right in. And you've got a quarterback who can run. 
And not only can he run, he showed us today he can pass the ball pretty well. Deshaun Cameron handing off to Ronald Williams. He bangs it straight ahead. Ronald Williams, a pure freshman. He is a very mature young running back. Works very hard. Watch him work in practice. Got great, excellent work habits. He's from 96 South Carolina. You know what that is, don't you, Joe? I've been there before, Mott. Yeah. Regularly. Nice place. He's averaged 91 yards a game on the ground, and he did not start until after the first four games of the season. He's a great athlete. This is the 13th play of this drive. It started back at the Tigers' 27. It's at the Illinois 3. Williams on the pitch. Really had problems as soon as he accepted that option pitch. Slipping down near the three-yard line in the arms of Derek Brownlow. And Derek Brownlow, a very excitable player. He is the he is the man that makes his defense go. Him and Mo Gardner were high school teammates. And I, I went down before the game. I said, Derek, have a good game, man. And I went to shake his hand, and he almost broke three of my fingers. <laughs> He's ready to play football. Had a birthday this last week. Celebrating it today. Tigers looking into the third and goal. Third and goal from the three. They're three of three on third down conversions. Double snap by Deshaun Cameron. Still squirts forward for about a yard to the two. So that is the only mistake so far in an impressive drive by the Clemson Tigers. They've already eaten up a good seven minutes on the clock. One of the few mistakes they've made. Just a little problem there with the snap between the center and the quarterback. But Cameron's still able to get forward almost into the end zone. Yeah, and here comes a young man we've been talking so much about, Chris Gardaki, the junior from Stone Mountain, Georgia. He's at 19 of 24 field goals this year. He's also one of the best punters of the nation, fourth best in punting the football. 19-yard attempt, a chip shot, and the Clemson Tigers have the lead. So a long drive culminates in three points for the Tigers as we'll be right back to Tampa. Welcome Joel. back to the fifth annual Hall of Fame Bowl. Joel Myers along with the moderate shot. Paul, I, I think you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. I got George Toma down here. George, now he's the groundskeeper for the Super Bowl, but I'm looking at this. After this game, you guys start, doesn't look like it needs much work. Actually, they have an excellent ground crew right here, and we pre, we're pre-germinating grass seed, and we'll be putting it on tomorrow or Thursday. But this crew is too terrific right here. All right, if you don't do it right, we're sending a mod down to check on you, George, so you better do it right or you go rip your throat out. Oh, I think I can run faster than he can. You can. Yeah, Joel? Some, <laughs> some mild words on New Year's Day. Pleasant greetings from Paul McGuire. And Happy New Year to all of you from all of us at NBC. Now, Ahmad, what does that do mindset-wise for the Clemson Tigers? A long drive, a very impressive one, but they have to settle for three. Yeah, I think they would have liked to have gotten a touchdown out of that because coming out of that drive, I think the Illinois defense has got to feel like a victory right there. They kept them out of the end zone. When you're playing against a team like Illinois, you need to score six points as many times as you can because they have that quick scoring power, that quick scoring possibility that they can come right back down and they score touchdowns, not field goals. Gardani is into it. Lynch and Hamner back deep. Lynch, the lane, and is going to bring it out after a moment of indecision or what a mistake. He barely got it across the 10. Did a good job just to get it out to the 14-yard line. Clinton Lynch, the freshman from Youngstown, Ohio. Well, they're excited, and you get excited, and in one of these college games you go, you tell you to stop. Flip you want to go anyway. Should I or shouldn't I? <laughs> Hopkins, Simpson, Lovelace, Pepper, and Laster. Big offensive line for the Fighting Illini for Dusko in his first year as the starting quarterback, taking over for Jeff George, flanked to the backfield by Griffith and Lester. Turner and Wax the wideouts with Finky. A very good one at the tight end position. So first and ten for Illinois. Griffin starts in the backfield, and they've got a change now. Camino Bell's in there. And it's a fumble to the first play for Illinois. Loose ball. John Johnson, I believe, has it. Yes, John Johnson of Clemson with a recovery. One of the things that Clemson's defense has done so well is they keep giving the ball back to the offense. During the course of a game, they will make the, they will cr create turnovers all the time. And that was Howard Griffin. Howard Griffin tried to run it up the middle, and he just takes a pop right there on the ball, and it's loose. But that's the thing that Clemson's defense does. They create turnovers. 
Here's another angle of Griffith taking the handoff. Trying to get up inside, and that ball's just knocked loose, and all of a sudden, Clemson has another chance. We'll be right back to Tampa. The Tigers on the move. The 1991 Hall of Fame Bowl is brought to you by Napa, because there are no unimportant parts. By Head & Shoulders, because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. By Ultra Slim Fast, a delicious, healthy way to lose weight. And by Alamo. There are over 4 million miles of roads in America, and with Alamo, all the miles are free. Beautiful overhead shot of Tampa Stadium, the home of the Buccaneers. Sunny skies, 85 degrees. A great New Year's Day on the west coast of Florida. John Makovic knows how to play catch-up football. Some of their biggest wins this year have been from behind. He'd prefer it the other way. But they are in a little bit of trouble right now. The line have been outscored 90 to 51 of the first quarter this year. Clemson first and 10 from the 14-yard line. And Cameron throwing. It's complete. Touchdown Tigers. Doug Thomas. So the Tigers capitalized right away by going to the air, and it was interesting to mod when they had the ball first and goal earlier and had to settle for a field goal. It was three running plays when the pass was the reason they got down inside the 10. Well, you know, when you get down close in there, Joe, you got to go to your strength, which is the run. The further you are away from the end zone, the easier it is to pass. You got bigger passing lanes. As you get down in there closer, they all start to, to crimp in, and then you got to go with your power. Very docky. Has hit now 70 straight extra points, and it's been all Clemson so far. The first career TD for Doug Thomas. We'll be right back to Tampa. NBC's Championship Tuesday continues with a Fiesta Bowl as the Crimson Tide of Alabama battles Louisville. Then it's a primetime showdown of the Orange Bowl as number one Colorado battles Notre Dame to decide the national championship. For the best bowl action, NBC is the place to be. An excellent play by Clemson. Number 24 right here will clear this area out. These fellas here got to play the run. We'll have Doug Smith come right here and bring it all the way across. And a nice little fake here. Bring it out here. And the pass. Uh, excellent play. Watch Cameron. A little fake. Now here he comes out. You see the two linebackers playing the run. Here comes Smith coming across. Wide open. Nice throw. And a nice run into the end zone. So that is the first career TD reception for Doug Thomas. Tiger fans know quite well what he's done on kickoff returns this year with two 98-yarders for touchdowns. But the senior from Hamlet, North Carolina, first catch for his score. Another great kickoff by Gardaki. Lynch, this time, will keep it right there. And the Illini, who had the ball for all of 13 seconds on their first possession, get it back. Once again, there's Doug Thomas coming across Wide open the entire way. You see the linebackers underneath him have to pay attention to Cameron because of his running ability. Now, here comes Cameron. He comes running out here. Now, the linebackers have got to watch him because if he doesn't have the, the receiver open downfield, he can run. He finds Doug Thomas, fires the ball just wherever he's hit by Brownlow, and he knows it's a touchdown. There it is. Verdusco in the offense back onto the field. And Griffith in the backfield. Play action for Produsco. Trailing by 10. And a wide open shot. Complete for a first down across the 35 to the 36. We have time now to take a look at the Clemson defensive unit after that 16 yard reception. McLaughlin, Davis, and Hammond up front. Kirkland, Brewster, McDaniel, and Johnson, the linebackers. Brewster and McDaniel, the two leading tacklers for the Tigers. And in the secondary, Henderson, Davis, Nunn, and O'Neill with Dexter Davis, their big playmaker back there. He also brings back their punts. You are going to see a very powerful arm by Jason Verduzco. He can throw the ball well. Oh. Howard Griffith working his way out of the backfield into the secondary. Another Illinois first down across the 45, out of the 48-yard line. 
Joel, you talked about how tough this offense is because they do run the ball very well. Anytime that you have to start worrying about receivers like Sean Wax, Albert Turner, all of a sudden they hand the ball off to Howard Griffith, who was an excellent runner. Very nice cut right there. Cuts back into the hole. Now starts to take it downfield. You have got to respect Illinois' ability to run the ball. When you do that, they come up with the big pass play. Howard Griffith who visited Red Grange yesterday. It was a thrill, a real honor. He's the single set, double tight end formation for Verduce going first down. And he's Sean Wax, and he can't hang on. A big hit of line by Robert O'Neill, the free safety. Sean Wax is playing. He pulled a groin muscle earlier in the week. And I talked to him before the game. He said it was just a little bit tight. But here, this is one of those balls that you know you're going to get hit. You'd like to have it a little bit put on him. You don't want to be led in there when you run that little quick pattern in. He's led just a little bit, and Robin O'Neill is there to greet him. Six four, not a lot of weight on that six foot four inch frame, though, Ahmad. 180 pounds for the senior from Rockford, Illinois. But extremely tough. Runs great routes and has great hands. He sets up on the same side as Stephen Mueller on second and ten. Oh, it's big much out to the 48 a yard that is it just across the 48 Ed McDaniel making the hit along with Chester McLaughlin a lot of pride on this Clemson defense I we were talking about going to practice over there and all the guys kept saying man come over and watch the defense as you can see that they they are second against the rush against scoring Six of the against the pass. They are an excellent group. They were voted the best defensive linebackers in the country before the season started. I don't think that they've wavered anything from that. They've got eight of them that are all tough. Verduce go operate out of the shotgun on third and just about ten. Pressure coming and he's down. John Johnson, the outside linebacker. The first sack for the Tigers. Did he ever fly in? They had another player that played that same position here at Clemson by the name of Steve Atwater. And they say that John Johnson reminds them so much of Atwater. He came from the other side. John Johnson runs a 4-3-8-40. A 39-yard average this year for Forey Wells. It's a low-line drive taken by O'Neill at the 30. Breaks the first one with a flag down on the play. And he's out at the 36, close to the 37. But there is a flag down. So the Clemson Tigers get it back. They're already up by 10. There's a 35-yard punt by Wells. Clipping on the runback team, 15-yard penalty. So everything going Clemson's way despite the flag coming down on that play. When we return, they've got it back with a 10-point advantage. Quarterback Sean DeCameron. Deshaun Cameron knows that the ground game is the bread and butter, but he likes the pass as well. I'm sure if we, we had to go, if we had to go to the passing game, uh, we could rely on it and uh, do very well at it. It just so happened, you know, Col uh, Clemson offense is a run-oriented or offense, and uh, you know, that's one of the luxury by having a great passing game to back up a running game. That is the biggest surprise so far to Sean Cameron and the Clemson Tigers throwing it very efficiently in the early going. 63 yards on those five completions when everybody expected to see the option attack. They have certainly kept this Illinois defense off, off beat. Those 63 yards, more yards they've had through the air already. And they've had three games this year as Cameron runs the option. Across the 25, near a first down. He's at the 28-yard line right at the first down marker, brought down by Marlon Primus. I'm telling you. Chris Green, the cornerback, the injured member of the Fighting Illini. And Cameron coming at him every which you kind of way. He's coming at you, throwing the ball, running the ball. And you just watch. I said he was a magician with that ball. You don't know who has it. Now he's got the option to pitch it back or take it up in that big gap. He finds that gap and just takes off running. Marlon Primus, number 16, he wants to, to key the quarterback at all times. Forget about the running back. Just go tackle the quarterback. 
So with Chris Green down, we'll take a timeout from Tampa, Florida. Clemson with the ball and a 10-point lead. The senior quarterback for the Fighting Illini, Chris Green, missed the first seven games this year with a broken leg. Fortunately, back up under his own power. Made it over to the bench. It's Blunt on the carry for Clemson. On first and 10 from the 28. He's out of the 30-yard line, and that is it. The game dominated so far by Clemson. This is their third series. They started with it the first time they had the ball at their own 27. That resulted in three points, and then they got that turnover at the Illinois 14. They're usually able to accomplish that time possession stat because of a strong running game, but today I think the big story is that the time possession is that way because of their ability to throw the ball. Doug Thomas, the motion man. Cameron holding on to it. And he's got it to the 34-yard line. We'll bring up third down and five. So all of a sudden, Clemson, who has run the ball 76% of the time this year. One, I tell you, there's a, you see Mo Gardner going out. He's hurt. Boy, that'll be a big blow to this defense. Gardner has just limped off the field. And he took himself out. There he is limping over to the bench. If he can't return, that would be a tremendous blow for Illinois. Mark Zitnick has taken over. Number 97 is Cameron, who's throwing on 35. Doug Thomas has it again. He is, I believe, a little bit short of the first down. He was right at the marker until he went back a couple of yards, trying to spin free of the first tackler. Quinton Parker finally got him the strong safety. But I think they're just barely short. He also made a nice move. I think that's why he missed that first down, as he came back to the ball. That's something that, that you can teach a receiver, but the great receivers do that. Right at the end of the pass route, you got to run right back to the quarterback. That enables you to be open enough to catch the ball. Watch, you see him come back and make that catch? But here he tries to get a few extra yards, and that causes him to come up a little bit short of the first down. Just a matter of inches for the Clemson Tigers. Do they take a chance with a 10-point lead this early in their own territory? Coach Hatfield, that's a decision you don't have to make, and it appears that they're going to go for it. So we look at John Makovic, one of the fine gentlemen in coaching. I've always been a big fan of his. And Amati told us he really loves the college game because of the control you have in the college game as opposed to the pro game. But he's still, those rumors fly. He's a teacher, Joel. He's, he's one of those coaches that likes to go out and teach the game of football to players. He's in his third year at the University of Illinois. All three seasons, he has taken them to a bowl game. With a win last year in the Gator Bowl. It's at the 39-yard line, and it's fourth and inches. Trips in the backfield for Deshaun Cameron. Movement on the line. No contact, though, by the Illini. And the flag is down. They, they had a chance to make that work. They went up to the line scrimmage and just said, we won't go. We're just going to try to pull them off, exactly off, off sides. And they did, but they didn't snap the ball. They certainly had a chance because if that was a play, then it must have been on 15 because he had called Hutt about 12 times before there was any snap. But they had drawn an Illinois defensive player off sides, but they just didn't snap the ball. There he is right Delay there. a game on the offense. Still fourth down. And Ahmad, they are working with the backup center, Mike Brown, as opposed to the regular Curtis Whitley, who violated team rules when they were training in Orlando. So they're going with the backup center. Maybe the experience of the starter, he would have automatically snapped it to the quarterback, Deshaun Cameron. That certainly would have been the case. Stephen Mueller waiting for the punt from Chris Gardakis, fourth in the nation in punting. A little bit over a 44-yard average. Sends out a beautiful spiral. Going back, Mueller, to his own 13-yard line. And he's wrapped up, crossing the 20 at the 22. On that last play, when they were just trying to draw somebody off, off sides, watch number 96 right here. Jeff hasn't stabbed. He gets it. Watch him jump off sides. Now the ball should have been snapped right there, and all of a sudden you got a first down. But he's able to get back, and all of a sudden they end up not getting it. Oh, that's male aging. It's a 54-yard punt by Gardaki. And the Illini down by 10, get it back at their own 22. Griffith 
in the backfield. Now it gets the call. And not much available again. Only 72 yards a game on an average allowed by the Clemson defensive unit. But as I mentioned, the Illini in some of their best games this year have come from way behind. Their biggest game of the year, their win over Colorado, they trailed at one point in that contest, 17 to 3, before finally winning 23 to 22. You know, one of the problems of doing a college game, Joe, is Illinois brought down 138 people. The pitch for Griffin tripped up. But they going out of the 28. They don't have any numbers over 99, so some of them are double. Which is always entertaining for those of us up here in the booth. <laughs> That's right. I'd like to see somebody come out there with number 112. Only in the longest yard. Played against Texas one time. They had a couple guys to 112, and they all got in the game. It's third and four. Out of the shotgun, Verdusco with time. Pressure comes. He can't get rid of it. John Johnson there, also in there, Ashley Shepard, the freshman from Greenville, North Carolina. Give the sack to Shepard. They are deep defensively. Second sack for the Tigers, a loss of 18 yards on those two. Now, Verdusco having a lot of time to throw this ball, but nobody appears to be open. So Clemson doing a fine job, even though they haven't seen a passing attack quite like this, with that athletic ability, they're whole, they are covering the receivers very well. Corey Wells with a short wobbler, touched by Hankel. Up close to the Clemson 49, so Clemson gets it back, and again, outstanding field position. You know, I spoke to the defensive coaches at Clemson, they said, we're not going to be concerned with all those different formations. What we're going to do is just play our, our couple of formation, defensive formations and use our athletic ability to try to shut down this passing game. They've done that so far. That yeah, was only a 29-yard punt for Forey Wells. If it appears today that Paul McGuire is a little shell-shocked, well, there's good reason. Let's check in now with Paul. I, I see him, but I can't hear him. I don't think he can hear either sitting next to that cannon. <laughs> Obviously, technical difficulties. Whoa! Cameron on the pitch for Ronald Williams. Belt it in the backfield. Mo Gardner's back in there. That's a loss of three yards back to the 46. Mo Gardner, what a mature young man. His wife, Mickey, and daughter, Morgan. Taking in the game. Mo Gardner is a player. I mean, it would take more than... If he was able to limp off that field, I guess we should have figured he'd be on his way back, even if he had to limp back in. But he certainly wasn't limping after making that last play. Well, he's Illinois. All-time leader in tackles for loss. And he's putting pressure on Cameron now as it's thrown behind the intended target, Ronald Williams. It's good pressure on the quarterback. He had to scramble out of the pocket. One of the things that Mo Gardner does so well, he has an excellent spin move. That's what you read about. We have a chance to watch him use that spin move. Here's Gardner. Watch him take on two guys. Spins right out of the grasp. And now he, he's able to put pressure on the quarterback. He's extremely quick. He is the Illini's first two-time All-American on the defensive side since Dick Butkus back in 64 and 65. And now a third and long coming up for Deshaun Cameron of the Tiger offensive unit. They haven't faced that all that often in the early going today. About a third and 13, back of their own 46. Will they waste this great field position? Cameron with plenty of time going for the home run for Terry Smith. And it's poked away at the last minute by Henry Jones. The senior from St. Louis. Henry Jones step for step with Terry Smith. Henry Jones, he may be a first round draft choice as a cornerback. He can really fly. And so, come, so can Terry Smith. You see him. Watch, watch number 18 make this very nice play on the ball. Just right over the top of that receiver and knocks it away. I saw him last night in the hotel, and he said, you know what? I need to show everybody in the country how well I can play. And he, he, he's doing that so far today. Homer Billiken from St. Louis University making the play. Gardaki, his first punt, 54 yards. Kicking away to Steven Mueller once again. This one hangs up. Mueller. Hit at the nine and falls forward on the final play of the first quarter. 
up to the 11-yard line. So when we return, Clemson is giving the ball back to Illinois, but the Illini battling their way back uphill. As we look at the stats here in the first quarter, I think the surprising thing is 67 yards passing by the Tigers and only 16 by Illinois. Coming into this game, we expected it to be pretty much the other way around. That last possession, though, for the Clemson Tigers, one they may look back upon as a big turning point in the game. First and 10 of their own 49, and they went three snaps and a punch out back to Illinois, who's got it now at the 11-yard line. Verduzco under the lane to Griffin. Griffin bouncing outside with good yardage. He gets eight to the 19 as we head downstairs to Paul McGuire. With positive results once again. You know, I think I saw him in that position earlier. You know, Paul, I know what you were saying was funny and very pertinent to this football game, but we didn't hear you. And you know he's going to claim sabotage by us. We certainly did do it, but we know we will get back to Paul shortly. Second and two from the 19 for Illinois. Wagner Lester is first carry. It's a loss of a yard back to the 18. Al Richards, another backup, along with Brenston Buckner. They go six deep on the defensive front three for the Clemson Tigers. They are so tough defensively. Just great team speed. They they flock to the ball, swarm to the ball. All of them want to get a hit on the on the whoever's got the ball. Just a very tough defensive team. They've had a lot of luck outside of the conference. You can see over the last three years, 13 and one. Now it's third. And close to three, Howard Griffith trying to pick the first down on the ground. And I believe he's short. He got to the 21. He had to go across the 21, though. Wayne Simmons, the outside linebacker. They run so many people at you. Simmons, another one who backs up Levon Kirkland on that side. They, they, their tempo uh, of defense is so high, and they keep running in so many players that they're always fresh, and they're always to keep that tempo at a level where they're coming 100% the entire game. Are you surprised they did not throw the ball on third and close to three, try to run it against the best defense in the nation against the run? At some point in time, uh, your, your pride gets on the line. You've got to establish the fact that you can run the ball in those tough situations. Otherwise, you're not going to win. Corey Wells, end over ender, taken by Dexter Davis. And again, great field position for the Clemson Tigers when we return to Tampa at the Hall of Fame Bowl. They've got it first and 10 outside of their own 47, still with that 10-point lead in 12.50 left in the first half. The 1991 Hall of Fame Bowl is brought to you by Acura Automobiles. Experience precision-crafted performance by Xerox, the document company. By the Upjohn Company. If you're concerned about hair loss, see your doctor. And by the Prudential, where we won't let you get it until you've got it. It is a case of extremes so far this afternoon at the 5th Annual Hall of Fame Bowl. Illinois, two minutes into the second quarter, has only tried two passes. Well, Deshaun Cameron has been throwing it effectively fingertips of Terry Smith so coming into the game you expected Illinois to put it up regularly instead it's been Clemson and Clemson also has just had the ball the entire first quarter Illinois not have been not having a chance to establish anything they've sort of just trying to find something that'll work and once again you see Terry Smith going up for that ball and I'd say that he was covered in the front and the back that looked like double coverage to me. Deshaun Cameron now 6 of 10, a total of 67 yards. Throwing the ball for the 11th time, or will he run it? He'll bounce to the outside and get positive yardage into Illini territory at the Illinois 48-yard line. Five on the carry for Cameron. That's the tough thing about this type of an offense when you have a quarterback who can throw the ball and it can also run. It puts you in such a bind as he rolls out, you don't know whether to drop back and cover the receiver or to come up and make the tackle. But yet, whatever you do, the quarterback has the ability to make you wrong. In the Duke game, Cameron was the leading rusher for the Tigers with 84 yards. So he's comfortable taking it back under. They're looking at a third down now. 
third and five. The ball to the 48 of Illinois. And Ronald Williams goes in motion. Get him. Cameron with a wide open receiver. Doug Thomas for a tiger first down. It's to the Illinois 30 in front of Henry Jones. And another big cushion for the wide out. Cameron just turns around here and Doug Thomas was wide open to a big cushion by right here. We'll watch Thomas just run down and out here. And then you'll see Cameron with a little fake here, turn around and fire the ball down. Too much room by this guy. You got to come up and play him a little bit closer than that. It's man-to-man -man coverage. Hey, look at this big cushion. Huge cushion. The dive play goes to Howard Hall. The first man through inside the 30. Down to the 27 for a gain of three. Julian Brown making the hit out of East St. Louis. I, I think one of the things that, that this Illinois team realizes is that at the receiver position, even though they come into this game not throwing the ball very much, there is a tremendous amount of speed in the receivers of Clemson. And I guess that's why you got to get back and give them some room. So we look at Howard Hall there. 58 rushes for 258 yards over the season. Second and seven. Cameron ready to put it up once again. And as a man wide open, it's complete. Here's Larry Lyons, an All-American hurdler on the Clemson track team with another Tiger first down. I told you, they have a lot of speed. And when you have that speed, defenders have to play further off you. As we look at Ryan's in the slot there, just runs around and turns around. Easy passes there, right in the middle of the zone, turns around. All Cameron's got to do is put the ball right to him, just like playing catch. And I, and I think that Illinois is still not recovered from the fact that they're coming out throwing the ball. They're running it on first down. Ronald Williams can't get out of the backfield, knifing through John Walker, senior from Wheaton, Illinois, making the play. And it's a loss back to the 17, a loss of a yard, bringing up second and 11. Larry Ryans comes by that speed naturally. His uncle, John Gilliam, was a speed burner in his own right. Great receiver for the Minnesota Vikings. Went to quite a few pro, pro Bowls, and if his nephew continues to play like he has, he may have some of those Pro Bowls in his future. Passing situation for the Tigers. Cameron looking over the middle, wide open. He's in. Touchdown, Clemson. <laughs> there was no question that Howard Hall was not going to score after he started running. <laughs> after he took five or six, six steps, Joe, I seen guys trying to get out of the way. He was like a runaway freight train running down through there. Six feet. 230 pounds, a sophomore from Gastonia, North Carolina. There is a Howard Hall on the campus of Notre Dame. My man was running like a broken, broken runaway building. Gardaki. True to four with the extra point. It has been a dominating start today by the Clemson Tigers. Howard Hall lines up in the backfield just a little. He checks. No assignment. Now here he comes. That's a play. Catches the ball. Now watch him start heading for that goal line. The guys aren't in a hurry to get up off the ground to try to come up and stop him. Ten and a half left in the first half. Tigers by 17. Here is Howard Hall. Here is Ronald Williams right here. Now, you're going to see Ronald Williams come through here, and now the first guy to get him will be Hinkle. Hinkle, he's got the first man out of the backfield. He gets taken off of here. Now, Howard Hall just steps over here, comes over the middle. Cameron with a little fake here, hits him, and he's in for the touchdown. Now you see Howard Hall. He's just waiting over there. Here comes, watch Ronald Williams. First guy out of the backfield, Hinkle takes. That leaves Hall wide open down the middle, and it's nothing but goal line. Gardaki with another Superman-like effort. Lynch at the back line of the end zone. Doesn't have an option. First and 10th, the Illini have their own 20. Now let's see if we can work things out with Paul McGuire. Hey, this microphone works, I know now. This is a 10-gauge shell. These are the Clams, Clemson Cannon team. Chris, Glenn, and Dan. Dave. Dave. And it comes there. They got a... <laughs> hey, wait a minute, Maude. Listen to this. They've got something for you and Joel for bring in the New Year's. You ready? 
<laughs> Ball in a position he's very comfortable with. Oh, first and ten at the 20. The Illini with only two first downs so far. Bringing in the new year with a bang, Paul McGuire. Verduzco trailing by 17, puts it up. And it's taken it in. Gus Palmer with a great grab. Palmer missing about half the season with a hip injury, but over the last couple of games really came on towards the tail end of the season. Junior from Bellport, New York. Everybody talks about this Illinois team coming from behind. I think they've taken it a little bit too far here in this game. They have got to get something going right here on this drive. Otherwise, it'll be too much pressure on Verduzco. Exactly 10 minutes left of the first half. 17 to nothing Clemson. Play action. Verduzco under throwing and fortunately under throwing Jeff Finke the tight end because it was well covered and it could have easily been an interception. Levine Kirkland applying the pressure in the backfield on the quarterback. Boy, they like to roll Verduzco out when he's throwing the ball, but boy, he's rolling out the wrong to the opposite side. Just as he let that ball go, he got popped. And that is Kurt Lovelace, who's down. Kurt Lovelace playing in this game. He had a knee injury early on in the year, and rather than have it repaired, he said he's going to play one more game and then get it repaired in the offseason. But watch, watch this hit right at the end of this play. So a shot taken by Verduzco. They're still working on Lovelace, the backup center for the Fighting Illini, only a freshman. They're still working on the knee of starting center Kurt Lovelace. He's backed up by a redshirt freshman Greg Engel. He's had knee problems, as Ahmad mentioned. So a new center taking it over on third and six at the 24-yard line for the Illini, down by 17. John Wright goes in motion. Verduzco finds some time. And intercepted. Picked off by Arlington Nunn. He may take it all the way. Touchdown, Tigers. Interception return for a touchdown. The third time he has done that. An overwhelming performance right now by the Clemson Tigers. And talking to their coaching staff, they said they weren't, weren't going to be concerned with all these offensive formations. They were going to let their athletic ability be the key in stopping this Illinois pass offense. So Arlington Nunn returning the interception for the touchdown. The third TD off an interception for Nunn this year. First time in Clemson history in the same season. And Verdusco rolling out here trying to find somebody open downfield. And he does find somebody open. It is Arlington Nunn who just is off to the races. He's looking for Albert Turner, but Nunn stepped in front and Picks up a 34-yard touchdown on the interception. Off balance, on his way down. Great pressure again by the Tigers' defensive unit of the quarterback. He had nothing on the pass. Good coverage, though, too. He had a lot of uh, Tigers right around that receiver. He's down. back home, and what a treat for him. He grew up right here in Clearwater, just across the Tampa Bay. He's the senior. Two-time academic All-ACC selection. He'll graduate with a degree in marketing. I almost made that academic All-America team when I was in college. I was maybe three, four points off. Out of what? What was the, out of the GPA of what? I don't think they had the five-point GPA. I had the two. <laughs> <laughs> that was honorable mention. John Makovic and the Fighting Illini must feel like this is Iowa revisited when they were down 28 to nothing before they knew what hit them. Well, they don't, I, they don't want to make a habit of making these huge comebacks, but they will have to in order to get into this game. Another great kickoff by Chris Gardaki. You ever wonder why college teams kick the ball in the end zone and they watch a pro game, they kick it to the 20? We talked to Chris Gardaki, asked him why he chose Clemson over other schools.
Coach Ford did point out when I was being recruited that he wanted me exclusively to do both. And there are a few other schools that I, I was really considering also. Uh, one school said, well, you know, I want, we definitely want you to do this, and then, but you try out for the other position and so on. So that, that, I guess that helped a little bit knowing Coach, you know, Coach wanted me to do both from the get-go. Trying to stabilize the situation, Howard Griffith carries it for the fighting Illini. Gets seven out to the 27 on first down. Sorry, Doc, he pondered that question quite a while before he answered it, didn't he? All-time kick leaders, some good ones in there. David Treadwell right now kicking for the Denver Broncos. Who's the leader? <laughs> <laughs> I see you conveniently slipped by Obed Ariri. I knew he was your man. <laughs> Second and three from the 27. Thinky, the tight end in motion. Pocket holding it up. Flag down to the play. He wanted Sean Wax. Looks like a holding call coming up against Illinois. What can go wrong next for John Makovic and his crew? Holding. Well, not much has gone right, that's for sure. At this point, you almost have to give up trying to establish any type of run. You need to try to get some points on the board, and the best way that Illinois can do that is throw the ball up in the air as you take a look at John Makovic. Fighting line, I have not started with the ball outside of their own 22-yard line while Clemson their defense setting it up so well has been winning the war of field position. And now getting a touchdown from their defense. Holding. Offense. Ten-yard penalty. Still second down. So they'll replay the down, but it's back inside the 20. That is the second penalty against the fighting Illini. Totaling 25 yards now for those two. And it's second and 14 from the 16. Griffith in the backfield. Pressure again. Verdusco. On the comeback. Almost an incredible grab. Over on the near side in front of the Clemson bench by Stephen Mueller. John Johnson, though, chasing the quarterback out of the pocket. We have been talking about the team defensive speed of this Clemson team. Watch number 91, Chester McLaughlin. Now watch him. See, he's a defensive tackle. Now he takes off running. This man is the largest human being that I have ever seen. He's 6'5", 340 pounds. They tell me he runs a 40 and 4'7". I said, well, how many times did he run it? They said, well, he just ran, he just ran it once. <laughs> First five possessions for the fighting Illini. The results, not the ultimate, obviously. And now a third and 16. Reduced to only two of six so far. Plenty of time and a wide open. Mueller. Mueller has the first down. Falling down. But he could have picked up even more yardage at the 38. And once again, let's check in with Paul McGuire. Joe, Kurt Lovelace, the starting center for Illinois, hurt the same knee that was operated on last November, and he is done for the day. All right, Paul. So a huge blow for the fighting Illini's chances very dapper look you have Paul with those glasses as we look at Kurt Lovelace I asked uh, somebody about him playing professional football I said this guy is a scholar athlete he's already won two thousand dollars in postgraduate studies and he plans on going on to school next year and not even thinking about playing professional football that is only the third first down for Illinois Think. fingertip control He's got the catch outside of the 42, close to the 43, run out by Ed McDaniel. Pinky, an interesting story. Now, this guy came to school on a basketball scholarship, right. got hurt playing basketball, and then went out for the football team. It usually goes the other way around. You'll see Pinky coming in motion, just a little up the field, break it out to the sideline, and there's that fingertip control. Very nice catch by Jeff Pinky. Very bright young man, valedictorian of his high school class from Casey, Illinois. I was almost that. You were close in a lot of areas. That's close. Second and six. And trying to come up with the reception, it was Steve Fagan, the sophomore from Deerfield Beach, Florida. Valedictorian means you were number one in your class, right? Right on target. Nope, I wasn't almost that. I was confused. <laughs> in high school, too. No, I'm in valedictorian. <laughs> I thought you said something else. So they're looking now at a third and six. 
8.04 left in the first half. Illinois still trying to come up with their first points of the contest. Trailing by 24. Verduzco trips to the near side. Out of the shotgun. It's for Sean Wax. Great grab by Wax. The senior pulled it in. The extra defensive backs were in there. Sean Wax, just excellent concentration on this catch. He is a tough kid. He's tall, wiry. Nice grab. Gets both feet in bounds. Of course, in college, you only need one foot in bounds. But watch this concentration. Goes up for the ball. That's a tough thing to do as a receiver. When you jump, you know you're going to get low bridged, and you just got to do it with a lot of confidence. And that's what he did. And at 6 4, he is the only Illinois wide receiver that could have brought that one down. First and 10 in Clemson territory. Reduce go with time to dump off to Howard Griffith. He loses the ball, but they say he's down to the 46. A lucky break for Illinois. Otherwise, this thing was turning around and going the other way. I'm just so impressed by the team speed defensively of Clemson. They are putting pressure on the run and the pass with equal ability. It's only a gain of two on the reception. You be the judge. Perdusco, there's the Griffith. Now he's down there. Yeah, I guarantee he's down. Verduzco warming up a little bit, hitting four of his last five as Griffin gets to the outside, diving to the 40-yard line. Saw the marker just inside the 40 at the 38. Good effort by Howard Griffith, the young man who broke the touchdown records at the University of Illinois of the immortal Red Grain. And he took a shot on that dive. On the way coming down, he was about to land on his head. And just before he hit the ground, he took a shot, spin him around, and he is still down. When you talked about what else could go wrong with this Illinois team if they lose Howard Griffith that could be awful tough but this was a pop just take a look take a listen to this once he went airborne Ashley Shepard the freshman really delivered the blow this Clemson team I'm telling you, they will hit you all of them want to hit you now and there's a good sign Griffith is up off the ground jogging over to the sideline, but that's the thing at this today. Not only do they swarm, they will put a hat on you. And I think that's pretty normal in this conference. They always have a lot of team speed and everybody wants to get in on a tackle. The Illini's player of the year, voted by his teammates. Howard Griffith, who came over to me at practice every day and said, you know, what's it like living with a television star? And I said, well, you gotta go ask her. <laughs> Actually, you never see each other. Wait a minute, the other way around. <laughs> it's at the 40, where it's third and two. Illini need to push it just inside the Clemson 38. Mueller and Wax, the wide receivers. As Lester is in the backfield now with Camino Bell. Bell taking over for Howard Griffith. Verduzco, four of his last five. That's deflected. That's intercepted by Clemson. Chuck O'Brien with the interception. The second one picked off for the Tigers. One of the problems that Verduzco has when he just drops straight back in a drop back pass, he's only 5'10", and when you get your hands up, you get that tip ball, and most of the time you get a tip ball, it ends up in a interception going back the other way give a lot of credit to Levon Kirkland the junior from Lamar South Carolina with the deflection and as we sit here Joel trying to do this game right next door my wife and daughter my wife is telling me I thought Clemson I thought Clemson didn't have a passing attack I told her all oh, nice they got a great passing attack can't you see that nice to know that Felicia just leaned over a minute ago to give you <laughs> trouble very early that's right <laughs> I told you Clemson could throw the ball. Clemson has done everything right so far. Their defense setting up the offense with great field position. And now they've got it back, leading by 24. First and 10 at the 37. The hill going to Rudy Harris. Harris bouncing outside for a first down, and that handoff from the backup quarterback, Richard Moncrief. So everybody getting in on the act now for the Clemson Tigers. 
Sophomore from Brockton, Massachusetts. Second leading rusher this year for Clemson, even though he only started three games. He runs like a bull. Boy, he really has a lot of power once he gets going forward. Very tough to bring down. And also, you talk about the depth. They've got depth at running back. And as I mentioned, Moncrief stays in there at quarterback. He'll throw his first one. No, he'll run it too. And he's got room down to the 45 of Illinois. Short of the first down by three. Mo Gardner finally getting to the freshman from Montgomery, Alabama. Jason Verdusco having his problems. He hit 64% of his passes this year coming into the contest. Only 57 yards of six completions so far and two interceptions. We talked about the, the Clemson defense not seeing a, a varied passing attack like Illinois has, but all of a sudden I think that Illinois has not seen team speed like Clemson has. Into the fullback, Rudy Harris again. And he's got the first down to the Illini 40. Talk to Jason Verdusco. The quarterback talked to us about how he handled the Clemson defense. They're going to be our top defense we faced all year. But I think it's great for us. We face this defense every day in practice, and we have a great defense of our own. But against them, I don't think they have a weak point. I think they're very strong. I think they're very, very fast, very quick. And for us to, to be able to move the ball on them, to even put points on the board, I think we're going to have to play a perfect game. I think he was very right with all those things that he said about Clemson. They are all of those. We haven't found any weaknesses yet. <laughs> That last run for a first down by Rudy Harris, the 12th first down. The injury is to Dwayne Bryant, the wide receiver, another freshman for the Clemson Tigers of Tallahassee. They are deep at the talent positions, a lot of youngsters. 12 first downs for Clemson, and eight of those coming by way of the pass. It's just like I was telling my wife, boy, they can pass. Did I say that earlier? All the time, I've heard you all week long. That's right. He's at the 41. Lunge into the backfield. The second man going nowhere. One of the few times the Tigers have been stuffed on a running play. Walked her. The defensive tackle making the first hit. Exactly five minutes left in the first 30 minutes of play. A 24 to nothing Clemson lead. A tough situation for this Illinois team. Their defense has got to start trying to get some turnovers to get the, give their offense a chance. Every time their offense has been on the field, they haven't been able to do anything, though. You'd think it'd be imperative to put points on the board before they head to the halftime locker room, but first they've got to stop Clemson. They may get more before it's all over at halftime. First pass by Moncrief, the South ball by his play. open room in the secondary. Good move by Blunt back to the inside. Inside the 25 to the 24, another Clemson first down. 16 yards on the catch. Great running by Blunt. Great run. He almost turned this thing loose. Here you see Richard Moncrief, just a nice little flat pattern out here to Rodney Blunt. Now watch him turn it up and follow his blocking. Cuts the ball back inside, and now he is really off to the races here. Powerful runner. And just excellent running. You know, using his blocking very well. Another freshman. We talk about how deep these people are. They have running backs for days. Moncrief trying to run it to the outside of the option roll. Brought down by Derek Brownlow. It's a loss. A little bit better than a yard. When you talk about that depth offensively for the Clemson Tigers, we've seen Blunt, Ronald Williams, another freshman. Hall's a sophomore. Harris is a sophomore. Derek Witherspoon, the backup tailback, is also a freshman from Sumter, South Carolina. This is the youngest group of skilled players over the last 43 years at Clemson University. So a lot to be excited about for Tiger fans down in Death Valley. That's certainly right. They are deep, deep at that position. Second and 11. Mindry ready to throw it. It's deflected. Rudy Harris grabbing it. But another loss on the play. Another loss of a yard. Back to the 28-yard line. It was just a tight end screen pass. They tried to get going there, but snuffed out by that Illinois defense. Don't forget to join NBC Sports Sunday for the AFC wildcard game. The Oilers and the Bengals. It'll all start at 12 noon Eastern time with NFL Live. O.J. Simpson, Bob Costas, and Will McDonough. 
the AFC wildcard game on NBC Sports. Blocks on the carry. Getting a block to the outside. He's down to the 21-yard line on that third and long situation. And it'll bring on Gar Daki and the kicking unit. Joe, one of the things that happens uh, with, a, with, a, with an offense the way the Tigers is, is that they start to wear down this Illinois defense. They have so many fresh players keep coming off that bench. And that just shot of energy over and over and over, eventually the defense starts to wear down. So successful only a junior. And this is going to be a 37-yard attempt. And Gardaki, for one of the few times this year, is missing it. It was straight, but it was wide left. So Gardaki missing on the alignment. One of the few errors for the Clemson Tigers as they lead by 24. Happy New Year and welcome back to Tampa Stadium. The fifth annual Hall of Fame Bowl. I'm Joel Myers alongside Ahmad Rashad down on the sideline. It's Paul McGuire. The Clemson offensive unit, Ahmad, very efficient, but it seems like everything is being dictated now by the Clemson defensive unit. Uh, you're right. Everybody, they look at this game and say, now, why is Illinois not doing anything? How come they can't do anything? Well, you know what the reason is? The Clemson Tigers are the major reason. They are playing a perfect football game. Consistently putting pressure on Verduzco in the pocket. Now he's going to work out of the shotgun with a minute 55 left in the first half. Verduzco to dump off to Wagner Lester for nothing. A loss of a yard to the 20-yard line at McDaniel, one of the team leaders in tackles, first team all ACC, making the stop. What I meant by the swarming tactics of the Tigers as, as soon as that ball was caught, there were three or four white shirts right on top of them. Second and 11. Verduzco with some time for one of the few times. To last, couldn't hang on to the pass thrown behind him. And that would have been a completion of only five yards to the 25. So great coverage downfield. Not only the pressure on the quarterback, the credit to the secondary as well. Davis, O'Neal, Nunn, and Henderson. And of course, they're working with a nickel right now. Eric Jeter comes in, the sophomore from Noonan, Georgia. Well, Clemson, on an average, the number one team defensively in the nation, only gives up 217 yards a game. Illinois with 97 thus far. And it's now third and 11, and they're running the ball with Fagan. Fagan will be well short of the first down. He got five to the 25, and that is it. And now, you'd have to think Clemson wants to stop the clock. They're going to get the ball back with plenty of time to put more points on the board. And they do exactly that. So Clemson uses their first timeout of the first 30 minutes of play. They've got two remaining and should get the ball back in outstanding field position. Wells has not been exactly booming the ball out on punts today for Illinois. And the Tigers should get it close to midfield. Don't forget to stay tuned to NBC Sports. Great college football coming your way the rest of the afternoon into the evening following the Hall of Fame Bowl we'll send it out to the Fiesta Bowl in Tempe Arizona Louisville clashing with the SEC Giant Killers the Crimson Tide of Alabama a team that won seven of their final eight and then it's the battle to determine the national championship as number one Colorado faces Notre Dame in a primetime showdown at the Orange Bowl that's all later today right here on NBC but right now the word is oh, can Illinois hold that Tiger Tiger hold the whole those Tigers. Tiger paws everywhere. Had a huge contingent of Tiger fans coming down from Clemson, South Carolina. Best effort so far by Forey Wells. The Illinois putter. Dexter Davis inside his own 25, bouncing to the outside. Past the 35. Clemson will have it at their own 36. That's one of the things I used to hate. And you run down the other team's sideline, you get knocked out of bounds, and nobody moves out of the way. One of the toughest hits he, he took on that return was the one he got on the sideline. 53-yard punt, but a 14-yard return by Dexter Davis. Don't forget, at halftime, we'll head down to Miami with Bob Costas, the NFL Live team. Updating you on scores, highlights, and they'll fill you in on what's coming up later on NBC Sport, the Fiesta Bowl, and, of course, Notre Dame and Miami this evening in the Orange Bowl. So first and 10 from the 36. Is Sean Cameron's in there. And it's out to the 40-yard line of the 41. 
A gain of five by Cameron on the ad lib. He wanted to throw the ball. Bill Henkel finally making the hit. Seems to me that he is trying to make his point that I am not just an option quarterback. I can throw the ball down the field. But one of the things he does, he has a great group of receivers. Clock continues to move. Complete to Witherspoon. All the Tiger backs have been in the game now. And the other freshman from Sumter, South Carolina, who owns the Tigers' longest run and also the longest pass reception for Clemson this year, taking that one in. They change players and lose no efficiency. I don't care who's coming off that bench. It's just the same offense. Well, Lamar, we were at a couple of their practices over the last couple of days, and that efficiency is there during their drills and workouts. Oh, it certainly is. I think anytime you see these teams, and I've seen them for the last three years in this conference, something they really take a lot of pride in is the fact that the, if that team speed, and they work at going 100 miles an hour every time they practice. The practices are not easy ones. A lot of coaches bring their teams down here. And Clemson's got close to 140 players down here, and it's a reward. It's definitely a reward to get to a New Year's Day game. But those practices and workouts were tough. At the end, <laughs> the pads came off, and the sprints began. That's right. Clemson came down early and had double days while they were down here. Two days in Orlando for a full week. I asked the guy, so you guys enjoy that? I said, yeah, it's better than being back on campus where there's nobody there, and it's cold. I have got to make it down to Clemson talking to Ken Hatfield. He was talking how beautiful it is down there. Lake Hartwell, the northwest part of the state, just 20 miles from Georgia, 20 miles from North Carolina, the mountains surrounding the area. Well, next time you're down in 96, you can just go right on over. I'll tell you what I'm going to do it, though. The Ryder Cup coming up in September on NBC. Oh, Leave a couple of days earlier for Kiowa Island, South Carolina. What a segue, Joe. That, Thank that you. Was, that was very, that was very nice. You took me to I the did lake. Tell, I did <laughs> tell Ken, though, I would, and I'm going to make it down there. Boy, you had me on that one. Any other NBC event in the area? Third niches. We'll get to it in a second. Diving for the first down, Deshaun Cameron. And Clemson. Will they use another timeout? No, they'll stay with a hurry-up offense. They still have two timeouts on the board. And also 20 points. Cameron setting up the screen. Witherspoon winning. Flag down to the play. Witherspoon also down at the 47 of the Illini. We have not mentioned. Call in. Offense. We haven't mentioned number 67, Stacy Long, but he is a fine offensive tackle. Look at him. He is huge. He, he at the banquet the other day. He walked in. He's got a big old chest. You can set a glass of water on his chest. It pops out so, so much. An All-American tackle, and he certainly has got a great career in the professional ranks. He was the only one, I think, when you got up on the days that you didn't poke some fun at. Wait, he's too big. <laughs> he was entirely too big, and he wasn't laughing much. 6'2", 275-pound senior from Griffin, Georgia. Consensus All-American. What a... Great right side of the offensive line, led by along. Also, Eric Harmon over there, another senior. First team All-ACC. Griffin, Georgia, I think that's the home of Willie Gall. Cameron in trouble and pulled down. Mel Agee with the sack, the senior from Chicago. And that'll be the final play of the first half. The first half completely owned by the gentleman from Clemson, South Carolina. The Tigers with a 24 to nothing lead. What a surprising halftime score. I think that, you know, the thing that we came here expecting was Clemson to take the ball and try to run it, and we figured that Illinois would be throwing it all over the field, and that hasn't happened. It's been just the other way around. Yeah, Clemson the, has been throwing the ball all over the field. One of the most surprised has to be the Fighting Illini's head coach, John Makovic. Let's head downstairs and check in with the coach and Paul McGuire. Thank you, Joel. We got Coach Mac. Coach Mac, 24 nothing. What do you What do you tell him? And what wholesale changes do you make at halftime? Well, you talk about Southern hospitality. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to talk to Kenny Hatfield. Uh, our offense just has not been able to do anything. We've had three turnovers. That's been a big difference. Defensively, we really haven't done that badly. We gave him the ball in great field position and returned an interception. But our defense will not last long. We're going to have to find out what we're made of in the second half. Any offensive changes? You're going to still stick with the game plan? We'll stick with our game plan. We're going to have to throw a lot more. We wanted to balance the run, and actually we've run with some consistency. But the point is we can't just run with it. We're going to try to get in the game the best way we can. We definitely
definitely will find out what kind of team we have. Thanks, Joel. Good luck. Good luck, second half. Back to you, Joel. All right, Paul. Nice to know, despite the score, he still hasn't lost his sense of humor. <laughs> a 24 to nothing halftime lead for the Clemson Tigers of the ACC. We'll be back to Tampa, Florida. But first, let's head down to South Florida and Bob Costas in Miami. Welcome back to the fifth annual Hall of Fame Bowl. The Clemson Tigers leading the Fighting Illini of Illinois 24 to nothing. Perfect conditions. Not exactly for the Illini so far over the first 30 minutes of play, though. Now, the Illini have shut down the option attack of the Clemson Tigers. A very good running attack. Ninth best of the nation, 255 yards. Did they spend too much time in workouts, though, worrying about the option and not the passing attack? Well, they shut down the option attack, and Clemson didn't run it very much. They came out throwing the ball. I think it was a surprise to everybody in the stadium except for us because we were right on top of it. We knew that's what they were going to do. Without but that's why they've been so effective. They've been able to come out, and all of a sudden, Illinois is sitting back trying to stop that run. They, come, they go to the pass, and they have been very effective with it. But, By the way, though, they didn't see the halftime show, the Battle of the Bands, I give it to Illinois. And I believe they won it last night at Illinois, the hotel that housed the Illinois Fighting Illini, the Harbor Island Hotel. They did have a battle of the bands last night on New Year's Eve, and I understand it was an early knockout. <laughs> but so far, it's a TKO for the Clemson Tigers where it counts for the playing field. And the Clemson Tigers defensive unit all year long has been able to do the job, dictate the tempo, set things up, positive field position for the offensive unit. It continues once again. It really does, and I think that what you see here is a tremendous tremendous athletic ability of this Clemson football team, especially defensively. Rather than them getting involved in trying to do to match Illinois set for set, putting everybody on all the receivers, what they did was they said, we got some great athletes, we're going to play our own defensive method, and we're going to just rely on that athletic ability to make sure that we stop uh, Illinois, and that's exactly what they've done. I think it's safe to say now, uh, we watched a lot of film of the opposition of the Fighting Illini, the Michigan State game in particular, one of the hardest hitting games I've seen in college football all year long, when Illinois came from behind to win that game on five Higgins field goals but physical and quickness that's another thing a very physical group they saw in the Big Ten I don't know if they ever saw a group this quick on the defensive side of the line I think you hit it right on the head because we thought the adjustment was going to be for Clemson uh, trying to adjust to that uh, vers versified uh, passing offense but I think it's the other way around Illinois is trying to adjust to that tremendous speed of the uh, of Clemson Deshaun Cameron in particular is making a statement we watched workouts didn't look bad in the passing attack during the workouts, but they didn't rely on the passing attack to get to that 9-2 record. It was the ground game. Very early, though, he came out, and all of a sudden, 75% of their plays early were through the air. I think the key there was he wasn't throwing to one receiver. He was spreading the ball around, throwing it to everybody, and then all of a sudden, when he had the Illinois defense dropping it back, trying to stop the pass, he would tuck the ball under his arm and take off running. It's just, a, it's been a great show uh, for Clemson. They have not done anything wrong. Less than 100 yards of total offense for the Fighting Illini of the University of Illinois is we have an opportunity to take a look at the halftime numbers, overwhelming numbers if you're a Tiger fan. And the big shock here is you look at the Tigers, 137 yards passing to 56 yards passing. And, and that, we figured that would be the other way around. And also, they've dominated with the run, 74 yards to 28 yards. I don't know what you do at halftime. What is, and you talk about, you know, what John Makovic has got to do when he goes in and talk to his team. They just got to play better. They have been flat out just outplayed across the board. Well, the knock against Clemson coming in was they didn't have balance to their offense. Those numbers tell you, though, they've worked things out. A great job by Coach Hatfield. He really has his team prepared. And, and just goes to show you that they didn't come in here saying this is all we're going to do and we're going to stuff it down your throat. We're going to do whatever we have to do to win, and that is to be even with the pass and the run and be able to throw the ball. Now, adjustments, Amah, that you had talked about starting drives. Clemson started on an average of their own 43, while Illinois was always bottled up. And give a lot of pre credit as well to the kicker, the punter, Gardaki, that we've talked about frequently. He's had some great punts when they've had to punt the ball, which wasn't all that often. Then his kickoffs, eight to nine yards into the end zone, so no return attempts. They have just been so solid. And, and I guess, you know, I was thinking about what John McAvitt would tell his team in, in, at halftime, and I think it's probably in the words of that old coach Canute Rockney, hold that tiger. 
<laughs> that was a good one. I was surprised, Ahmad, they could not get the ball downfield, the 20 to 30 yard route. And when they did finally complete a, pa complete a pass, it was only 8 to 12 yards. Well, when you got a lot of team defensive speed, you can't throw the ball way down the field. You, what you want to do is try to throw the ball. Uh, in front of them, have them turn around and make the long gain on the run because uh, these Illinois receivers are very good uh, running the ball after they make the catch. But if you try to throw the ball way downfield, there's too much speed on the other side and it's almost even. This is the guy they've been putting a lot of pressure on. And I don't think he's he's used to having a defensive rush in his face where guys uh, will get up off the ground and keep coming after you. And Amon, we were talking at halftime about the passing attack at the University of Illinois. You brought up a very interesting point about Verduzco that Kirkland, some of the other linebackers, were stopping short of him, trying to get that vertical leap to bat the passes. They are really putting pressure on Verduzco. He is rolling out, trying to take a deep drop, but the defensive pressure just keeps coming. And who the guy who, who knows what uh, Clemson's going to do is Paul McGuire. He's down with Coach Hatfield. Thank you, Ahmad. Hey, you know, I talked to Maggie about going on to halftime. He says it's Southern hospitality. He doesn't like it. <laughs> well, we the first half was our half. We came out ready to play. Our defense got the big turnover right away. The offense had a great drive. Only problem is, like I told him, I said, look, halftime, we got 24 points in the first. John Mackovich telling his team they can get 25 in the second. So it's, uh, I think the first five minutes this half is really going to determine this game. Kenny, Amar Rashad was saying that you guys went into this game with just basically two defenses. You're going to line up and play. Uh, that's about it. We just feel like uh, we got good depth. We got great team speed. We got great defensive attitude. And we just need to let the players make the play. So let's good luck this second half. Joel. Ball two, two defenses from Clemson. That's been too, too many so far for the Fighting Illini. And to say that that was their half, that may be the understatement of the year. There's a young Tiger. Somebody holding that Tiger. Beautiful day in Tampa, Florida. 85 degrees all week long. We've seen brilliant weather on the west coast of Florida. Tiger fans are happy on the opposite side. Not much to cheer about for the Illini fans that made the trip down from Champaign-Urbana. Unless they stayed here for the halftime show and they could cheer about their band. And the weather. And the weather. A definite improvement in the weather. So now Illinois will try to battle back from a 24 to nothing halftime deficit. They've come from behind frequently this year, but the one time they were knocked out early. It was the game against Iowa where Iowa had a 28 to nothing lead before the first half was concluded. And Iowa eventually went on to win that game easily 54 to 28. For John McAvity, you just got to like relax and almost start this game over. He is very relaxed. I'm talking about his team. They just got to forget about the fact that they're behind by a huge score and just try to do the things that they do well. Sometimes when you get in a hurry to try to get back in a ball game, it causes a lot of mistakes and you get further and further behind. But as you see there, they've outscored their oppo opponents 147 to 73 in the second half in 1990. So 2-1 to one in the second half. The Illini will get the ball to start. A problem spot for the Clemson Tigers all year long has been kick coverage. They were last in the ACC in kickoff returns and covering kickoff returns with a 26-yard average against them. The only problem for Illinois is Gardaki has been booting it just about out of the end zone. He's got it teed up at the 35. That'll help your average. Lynch and Hamner waiting for the kickoff. It'll be Lynch. He'll have an attempt this time for the goal line. Getting to the outside and a nice return of exactly the average that the Tigers are giving up of 26 yards. Shane Scott, the first one over there to knock him out of bounds. Apples. Freshman from Youngstown, Ohio. Aren't it? <laughs> a very important series right here. Well, you know they have got is. to start there. They don't want three and out. They three and out. I think the football Drink game the is, is over. I really believe that. I really believe that when you're behind like this and you come out, you've got to establish something right away. Three and out, and we know that Clemson has controlled this football game. They open the second half with a single back set. Tight ends in a wing position. And two wide receivers, the stinky goes in motion. First and ten from the 26. It's 
complete. Sean Wax has it. He gave up the first down coming back on the ball, but positive yardage. Nine yards to the 35 for the fighting Illini before he's belted from behind by Robert O'Neill. They've got to get Wax and Turner involved in the game, though. And Turner, a great wide receiver once he catches the ball. And we'll watch Wax and just run a little curl route. He runs it at 16 yards, but by the time he catches the ball, he's at about eight, and then he's drugged back for about a four-yard game, but they give him the catch up about an eight-yard game. First team, all Big Ten. Led the Illini with 54 catches. Here's hobbling off the field as he takes a break over on the Illini bench. Misdirection to Griffith. Bounces outside of the counter. And it's a first down for Illinois on uh, the running play. Doug Brewster in on the stop. John Johnson as well. The senior from Chicago. A former walk-on. I like uh, Ken Hatfield as we look at. Very few people get a chance to meet a living legend. The ironic thing was this legend knew who I was. He said he was honored to meet me. And I couldn't believe that. That's Howard Griffith talking about. The immortal one, Red Grange, who lives here in the Tampa, Florida area. First and ten. Play action for Verduzco to hold the linebackers. And a wide open Stephen Mueller complete inside the 40. Best completion of the day for Illinois, down to the 38. And that was one of the few passes that we have seen on rhythm. As we watch Verduzco, he's able to roll out, stop, and throw the ball. In the first half, he was rolling out, stopping, and then trying to find somebody. There he is. Nice, on-rhythm play. Nobody in his face. And wide open down the middle. That's one of the keys in having an effective pass offense when you've got a quarterback like Produsco is throwing the ball on rhythm. First and 10. The 38 of Clemson. Produsco jumping off the screen to Griffin. Griffin. Getting to the outside. Close to another first down for Illinois to the 29-yard line. Broke the single season and career touchdown record of Red Grange, the galloping ghost. You think of Illinois football, immediately you think of one person, and that's Red Grange. Griffith with the honor of meeting Mr. Grange yesterday. Illinois needs Red Grange here today. Try to get back in this football game. Second and less than a yard. They're throwing it again. Produce going trouble. Buying time for Finky. And good coverage. Jerome Henderson, the cornerback, staying with his man. We talked about throwing on rhythm, and that certainly was not on rhythm, and that's why they had Verduzco the whole first half. They're at number 44, Kirkland, just continually rushing the quarterback, does not stop. Gives him just a little Happy New Year tap there right as he let that ball go. LaVon Kirkland, one of the real leaders defensively. First team All-ACC, one of the five finalists for the Buckus Award. Reminds me a lot of Derek Thomas. Third and less than a yard. Ball just inside the 30 of the Tigers. The pitch for Howard Griffin. Get outside to get the first down. Knocked out of bounds short of the first down marker. Lost a yard. Back to the 31. Great pursuit. That quickness we've been talking about down the line of scrimmage. Just nowhere to turn that ball up. They just strung that play out right all the way to the, to all the, way to the sideline. You see Griffin there looking for a place to cut back. But as you can see, there's nothing but white shirts there in front of him. No place to cut up. And now a decision at the outset of the second half. It's already been made by John McAvick yeah. on fourth and two. Down by 24. He is going to go for it yeah, a lot. you got to go for it. There's no decision here. There's no reason to wait. There's no tomorrow. Two minutes gone by. In the third quarter. Biggest play of the game for the Illini. There to get back into it. Fourth and two out of the shotgun. It's for Dusko. Pressure. Fires and it's dropped by his running back. Camino Bell had the first down, the junior from Chicago. Well, he carried it only nine times all year, but he did catch 12 passes, so he's looking at one of his favorite targets out of the backfield. It didn't work out, though. Clemson takes over. The 1991 Hall of Fame Bowl is brought to you by Oldsmobile. Stop by your Oldsmobile dealer and see what's new from the new generation of Olds. By the Prudential, where we won't let you get it until you've got it. By Tylenol Cold, 
nobody cares for your cold like Tylenol cold. And by Ultra Slim Fast, a delicious, healthy way to lose weight. Joel Lamont, I've always wanted to do this. I might want to be on your variety show. I'm going to lead the Clemson band in the Tiger Rag. Ready? Hold on. show has nothing on Paul McGuire. I didn't know he had that much rhythm of mine. Hey, Paul can do it all. Cameron takes it himself and gets three yards out of the 34. Believe me, if things continue to go the way they're going right now, Paul will do another number with the band a little bit later. That's right. It'll be dancing down there with the band. <laughs> Game continues the way it's going. Second and seven for the Tigers. Paul obviously doesn't know how to stop the band because they're continuing to play as he's over there watching the game now. You could tell he was in charge though. Ronald Williams rolling over tacklers. Tripped up near the 38-yard line. And updating you now on scores. Bowl day, New Year's Day. Georgia Tech by 10 at halftime. The only undefeated team in the top 10 in college football. 16-point lead now for Miami. Over the Longhorns of Texas. And a key third down early in the second half for Clemson, leading by 24 at 33. Cameron. Trying to run it up the middle for the first down. Finds a little seam and has it to the 44-yard line. Didn't seem like there was any hole whatsoever. It's a great runner. A great runner. He found that spot, found a little crack, and just took off. Cameron looking deep downfield, trying to find a receiver, can't find anybody, tucks that ball, and now watch him just nice move there on A.G. Powers through for the first down. It's like an extra tailback back there. He told me the other day that he said, you know, if you had a quarterback like me, you'd still be playing. Down football will continue that conversation as he gives it to the dive man, Howard Hall. <laughs> That's what I told him, doubtful. Howard Hall on the carry. Taking it for a couple of yards, close to three out of the 47-yard line. So Clemson now, they just want to keep it on the ground, take some time off the clock, leading by 24. Now, Howard Hall, he's the one that has the fan club at Notre Dame, right? They, there's a girls' yes. dormitory there, and they, because his name is the same as the, the dormitory, they became his exactly fan club, that. right? Exactly that. Gets tons of mail from Howard Hall in South Bend, Indiana. Cameron on the little shuttle pitch to Ronald Williams. Good pursuit, though, by the Illini. Primus there, along with Henry Jones. Still good, hard running by Ronald Williams, the freshman out of 96 South Carolina. As we take a look at him ground level, a little shovel pass here. And watch, he runs really hard. It's hard for me to believe this kid is just, you know, one season out of high school. He's so mature as a running back. He is going to be a great one. 96. 96. Rookie Joel of the year in the ACC. And Tony had a lot of adjustments to make, Ahmad, because he came out of a very diversified attack that run, ran multiple sets in high school. So, and he had to really bulk up with his option attacks for the Clemson Tigers. Cameron throwing. He's got the fullback, Tony Kennedy. On third and about six, he's short of the first downs. The Illini hold Bill Henkel in particular coming through. I just so all six backs now have touched the ball for the Clemson Tigers. <laughs> Punting situation for the Tigers and Gardaki. Gardaki's already set a new Clemson record today for extra points. He's now hit 72 straight. Only a junior. First team all ACC. Punting and place kicking in each of the last two seasons. And a second team All American to boot. Well, 
it ahead of Steven Mueller into the end zone, a touchback. So Illinois will get it back after failing earlier on that fourth down conversion. They get it back deep in their own territory now at the 20. Downtown Tampa, basking into the Florida sunshine, 85 degrees at game time. At our home over the last week for NBC Sports, the Hyatt West Shore. Thanks to all those great people for making us feel at home. And this city very, very excited. Sandy Friedman, the mayor, instrumental in helping the city in this area, Tampa, St. Pete, and Clearwater, gaining a new National Hockey League franchise. And a growing area that's also one of the six finalists for a Major League Baseball franchise. We welcome you back to Tampa Stadium. Joel Myers along with the Madre shot. Happy New Year from all of us at NBC Sports. First and 10th, the Illini down by 24 at their own 20. Griffin for three. Been that way all day, basically, for the Illini. Two or three a crack, not much more. They definitely need a big play. I mean, they've got to come up. They have not had any offensive... Anything the entire game. Just a couple of 16, 18-yard passes, but that's been all. The only back with any kind of success has been Howard Griffith, the senior from Chicago. Facing a second and long now. It's second and seven outside of the 23. Trips, you can see on the near side. Griffith, the only one in the backfield. The pass complete. The tight end think he's got it for an Illini first down. And a very George nice Orman throw by Verduzco. Once again, throwing right on rhythm. When he seems to do that, it's a completion. As we look at number 44, Kirkland, he's, he's, see, he's playing both. He's playing the run and the pass all at the same time. A very active linebacker. Extremely fast. Has no neck. <laughs> he has muscles that go from his ears right to his shoulders. I said that about him the other day. He met me in the lobby. He said, what'd you say about me? I said, nothing. Best buddy. First and ten. At the 35. Verduzco with plenty of time. Pocket holds up. Has a man, Albert Turner, and overshoots him at the 30 of the Tigers. Turner's their best receiver after he catches the ball. Great speed. The defending Big Ten, 55 and 110 meter hurdles champion. This ball was just overthrown. If he had jumped yesterday, he wouldn't have caught that one. That ball was just thrown way over his head. What about the day before? <laughs> the day before, he might have had a shot. Second and 10 for Illinois, oh, really? 35. Fagan and Bell combining into the backfield, giving Griffith a break. Deep drop. And Verduzco has a man. Sean Wax can't hang on. Their leading receiver, the senior from Rockford. One of those days where you just think maybe you got onto the wrong side of the bed. Just a uh, very lonely, lonely feeling for this young man. He's wide open. Watch his head turn just before he makes this catch. Goes up for the catch. Now you see him turn. That's when he just lost. That's when he lost the ball there. Wanted to turn and run before he had it. He doesn't drop many. So now it's third and ten. There are only two of nine and third nine conversions. Will the pocket hold up? Verduzco with time. Here comes the pressure. Billy Way short of the first down. Good pursuit and great coverage downfield by the secondary for the Clemson Tigers. It has to be great coverage because Verduzco has had plenty of time to throw the ball the entire day. He just has not been able to find anybody to throw it to. Right there, he had plenty of time to get rid of the ball, but apparently no one opened. Dexter Davis and Jerome Henderson waiting for the punt from Forey Wells, the freshman from Belleville, Illinois. His last punt in career best of 53 yards, and this one is blocked. The Tigers doing it on special teams now. Blocked by Brewster. Coming up with a loose ball. It was Shane Scott after the block by Doug Brewster. John what Mac more can go wrong, Ahmad? John McAvick not believing what he's saying is Clemson goes through a little routine of high-fiving once again. See the snap. 
There are just too many. There's too many people in that ball could have been blocked by two or one of four people. And look at there's nothing but white jerseys around the ball. Where is Illinois? Brewster once again right on rhythm. That ball is just blocked right in the palms. And as we see everybody going to the ball, there's nothing but white jerseys over by the ball. The dive man gets it. That's Howard Hall. Nothing doing up the middle. Only a yard. Down to the 20. One of the senior leaders on defense, along with Ed McDaniel, shoring things up as the inside linebackers. Those two lead the Tigers in tackles. From Athens, Georgia. How did, they, how did, how did he get by University he, of Georgia? How did he get out of the hedges? Yeah. The fourth straight bowl game. For Doug Brewster. Deshaun Cameron with time. And a receiver. It's complete. Terry Smith. Down to the six where it's first and goal. Well, in the first half, they were going to Doug Thomas, the senior. Now the freshman grabs it, who's led them all season long in receiving. 15 yards on that catch. I just can't help believe that this Clemson team is having a ball out here. They get to come out and throw this ball around, and they're throwing it, they're throwing it the way that we thought Illinois was going to be able to throw it. Deshaun Cameron showing everybody who's watching that he can throw the ball. Michigan, ball of Mississippi in the Gator Bowl. As that is in as a final. The pitch, Ronald Williams, nothing doing. Good penetration by the defense, and Mel Agee in particular, for the fighting Illini. Loss of a yard. Outside of the six, close to the seven. Deshaun Cameron has been just so very accurate. One of the things that I thought they'd have a problem with was, was just the accuracy in their passing game because they hadn't thrown the ball so much over the year. But, boy, he has just been on target all day. The ground game has not been that overwhelming for Clemson. As Cameron gets it to Williams, he has had a rough day in particular. That is his third carry now for a total of 16 yards for Ronald Williams. And a tough 16 yards, too. So now it brings up a third and goal for the Tigers at the Illini five-yard line. They five won't. minutes and 40 seconds left in the third. Well, one thing that they always know, they got Mr. Automatic over there on the sideline. And Chris Gardaki, as we look at Coach Hatfield, who's done just a fabulous job with this football team. The preparation has been exceptional. Third and goal, Cameron. Dump it into the end zone and does so. Another Tiger touchdown. Howard Hall. Flag down on the play, though. I think he might have been past the line of scrimmage on that. Looked like he threw that ball after he was past the line of scrimmage. Ineligible downfield. Not much room to move downfield either. No. You know what I like about Hatfield? As he says, listen, we got some athletes on this field. We're not going to go try to do all kinds of tricks and different things. We're going to let them play. And a lot of times, the best coaching job is when you let your athletes play. The worst thing you can do is confuse them, have them th out there thinking, outthinking themselves or being tentative. He's just letting them play. An eligible receiver, downfield, five-yard penalty, still third down. Let's remind everybody when Ken Hatfield took over, this is his first year at Clemson. It wasn't a rebuilding project when he took over for Danny Ford. He told me it was difficult at first because it's been a very successful program. He's done an outstanding job, the 9-2 record. He said he wanted to learn from the players. He kept four coaches from the previous regime. He kept the quarterback coach, also the center and guard coach, the defensive line coach, and the recruiting coordinator. Not a bad idea keeping the recruiting coordinator. <laughs> That's true. Again with time, and then he can buy more of his own because he's got great mobility. In the end zone, he's got a man just barely deflected. Quentin Parker got a piece of it. So he was going for Ronald Williams. Well, see Cameron here showing tremendous mobility as he rolls out to his left. Now the tough thing to do is when you're right-handed, is get rid of this ball running that direction. But he just. Pulls up and lets it go. And a great play by Q Parker to knock that ball away. Here comes Jerry Smith. And watch him keep on coming. you got to stay alive. He's wide open right now. 
But the trick is that the quarterback's got to stop and get ready to set the throw. It's going to be a 26-yard field goal attempt for Gardaki, and he's right on target. So the first points of the second half come with exactly five minutes remaining to the third quarter. And they come from the second-team All-American for the Clemson Tigers, Gardaki. In the Illini's eight previous bowl appearances, they have never been shut out right now. They're being blanked at the tune of 27 to nothing as Verduzco and Makovic try to figure things out. It's always a bad sign when they start putting up graphics that say have never. That means that you are behind. Five minutes left in the third. The Tigers capitalize on the big play by the special teams. The block of the punt by Brewster, and they turn it into three points from that young man, Chris Gardaki. Returnable tight. It'll be Lynch dropping the ball, retrieving at the five. And just barely tripped up across the 30, out to the 32. He had a chance to go there. He really did. So the Illini have it back for the third time in the second half, but still, they're down by 27. Welcome back once again to Tampa Stadium. Joel Myers and Ahmad Rashad. Happy New Year from all of us at NBC. Under five minutes left in the third, a 27 to nothing Clemson lead. And Ahmad, you were right on target. You told me this is your third Hall of Fame bowl. You told me. It was going to be an entertaining week. It's been exactly that. These people really know how to put on a bowl game, and I'm just happy I get a chance to be a part of it. Never got a chance to be it as a player, and I'm having even more fun as an announcer. Verduzco on the quick one. Wax has it. He's got a first down hanging on this time. Chuck O'Brien delivering the blow. John Wax with an excellent set of hands. He dropped a a pass the last time they had the ball but you won't see him drop many he can catch the ball in traffic and also runs great routes it's only the eighth first down for the fighting Illini as opposed to 16 for the Clemson Tigers Griffin on the pitch to the short side makes the most of it not much available gets four out of the 47 well special thanks to the chairman of this great bowl Bob Sutton isn't he a wonderful host? And the executive director, Jim McVeigh. And they, they both have been so nice. They don't know I'm moving down here with them. They're so hospitable. <laughs> I think I'm moving in with those guys. Do you think the other 51 <laughs> weeks are this good, buddy? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Second and six at the 47. Reduced over the pocket collapse. He is on his way down. Hammond was back there, also David Davis. Of course, Jim McVeigh, who you mentioned from a great football family, yes. his father, John McVeigh, former coach of the New York Giants, and also had Alan Page as a player in high school in Ohio. So take a look at Verduzco. So once again, not able to throw on rhythm. Anytime that he has to double clutch that ball, he has been in trouble. That's when the defense just rolls over him. Somehow they've got to do something to be able to deliver that ball right on rhythm because you don't really have any more time to double pump and find another receiver. they 18 now. More pressure coming on Verduzco. Fires it. A low one. Did Wax come up with it? No. Little mini altercation. No flags on the play. Frustration, of course, by the Illini. And Wax rather coolly and smartly just walks away from that. Georgia Tech still leading by 10 over Nebraska. And also going on this afternoon, the Cotton Bowl down in Dallas at a 16-point halftime lead for the Hurricanes of Miami. Corey Wells had the last one blocked. Gets this one away in fine fashion. It'll be Dexter Davis back at his own 20. Davis. Finding some room past the 35. He's out to the 36. And now, the flags. It looked as if Derek Brownlow, as enthusiastic as he is about playing this game of football, 
A little extracurricular activity. Chicken fight going on. Very hard to hurt somebody in a fight in a football uniform. Unless someone loses their helmet. Well, then, <laughs> then you can get hurt. But as long as you keep all that stuff on, it's not real dangerous. Dead ball. Personal foul. Both ways. We have an ejection. Both ways. Derek Brownlow is one of the players ejected, and that is not the way he wanted to finish this game. He is just so upset and, and, and so frustrated. I'm sure the fact that coming into this game, I'm sure they expected to do a lot better, and he being the emotional leader, so fired up. These officials took, <laughs> they took no time in getting rid of both these guys. That is the end of the career for the fighting Illini of senior Derek Brownlow. We'll be right back to Tampa. Clemson's got it back. There are the two fellows that have just been ejected from this game. James Trapp, number 27 on the right, and Derek Brownlow, number 48. And now let's go down and see what old Paul's up to. Hey, Ahmad, I've got Randy Rogers, who is the recruiting coordinator of Illinois. And as we speak, he's on the phone trying to recruit. It's got to be tough, 27 to nothing. This is Coach Randy Rogers from Illinois. How are you doing? You got any tips for us? Yeah, score. Uh, we knew that, too. So, tell you what, uh, you had a happy New Year so far? It's not easy recruiting Ahmad when you're down 27 nothing, is it? No, I think he may want to wait and make that call a little bit later. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure somebody's on the phone, Paul? Yeah, maybe maybe there's a <laughs> dial tone there or a busy <laughs> signal. John Makovic saying they will be better days, son. Clemson's got it back. First and 10 at their own 36. Deshaun Cameron running the option and picking up. Tiger first down to the 47 of Illinois. Two minutes and 50 seconds left in the third. Deshaun Cameron is coming to this game and gained a lot of respect as a quarterback. There was a lot said about his ability to throw the ball. Everybody knew that he was a magician in terms of running that op option offense, but he's shown today that he can do it all extremely well. He's been very accurate, accurate every time he's had to throw the ball, and his running has been very uh, impressive. He must be the leading rusher here today, 13 carries for 61 yards. Well, he's got 61 yards on the ground, Abad. Good total through the air, 141 through the air. A little bit of that coming from the backup mine creep. But out of the 250 yards, most of it by way of Cameron. Spinning for more down to the 39 of Illinois. He gets seven on that carry. His best day on the ground came against Duke when he led the Tigers with 84 yards. He's up to 68 now. He is a big, strong quarterback. And I think if there was any question, it was his ability to throw the ball. It was a question on his entire team's ability to have a passing offense. And I think they, Coach Hatfield has quite all of that. Give him eight yards on that carry. 69 on the ground now. See, Illini stuffed that play completely. Mel Agee, the first one in there. So Cameron, not timid about calling his own number. You know, I had heard that Coach Hatfield had said that you know, he wanted to throw the ball, but like you said earlier, he inherited this team. They had already had an offense in effect, and he didn't want to go in with wholesale changes. So I think he talked about all the athletes you got on this team. All of a sudden, they showed that they can put a passing attack in in just a couple of weeks and be very effective with it. Coach Hatfield told us they couldn't have come from behind to beat Maryland in Baltimore, and they've not been able to throw the ball. It's Rudy Harris banging away for the first down to the 35-yard line. And that was the first time that the Tigers have been able to beat the Terrapins in Baltimore. So great year all the way around for the fans down in Death Valley. The recruiting coordinator, Mr. Rogers, had told me before the game that they make 70, 75 calls during the course of this game. I wonder how many calls he's making today or how many calls have been accepted. He needs a watch line. Well, as you're watching it, players can see that they do need a little help. Deshaun Cameron, five more to the 30. And another thing on that on that line, Joel, is the fact that a college bowl game, you got to give credit to both these teams for just being here. 
that is really a, a mark of a successful season that you got a chance to go. Of course, you want to win a bowl game, but if you can have enough success during the course of a season to be invited to a bowl, then, then that is just very exciting in itself. But for a coach, you got to win. Good thing about in, in pro football, it's only winning or losing. In college football, it really is how you play the game. Can I quote you? Yeah, I said, did I make that up? <laughs> Let me clean it up a little bit, and you might be able to quote me. Second and five. Hit and spun backwards, Rodney Blunt, the freshman from Pensacola, Florida. Now that should be the final play of the first quarter, but it goes back to what John McAfee was telling us on the sideline at one of the Illinois practices. He is not a proponent of the playoff system. He says, look around here. This is a reward. The, the playoff system would take everything away from what these kids gather, these young men, from the bowl games. I agree. There's enough playoffs by the time you get to professional football. At this college level, there is nothing like a tremendous feeling of being at a college bowl game. It's just something that you can't explain unless you've ever been there. That's the end of the third. Still all Clemson at 27 and nothing. Be right back to Tampa after these messages from your local station. Plenty to celebrate if you're a Clemson Tiger fan. It's been all Clemson as we get ready for the final 15 minutes of play. Tigers 27 and nothing of the fighting line eye of Illinois. Uh, the Tigers rolling right now. This is a third and short. Cameron holding on to the ball. And he is short by a little less than a yard. Needed three, got two. And Gardaki will come out. You know, the thing about when Gardaki comes out, it's not so important for him to come out. It's who's, if there's a holder coming out with him, because he is the punter also. It'll be a long field goal attempt for Gardaki. He's already hit a 57-yarder this year. That's had an ACC record. He's out here having target practice. This is going to be an attempt of 43 yards. Has plenty of distance. And he's on target once again. Three more for the Tigers and a 30 to nothing Clemson lead. The 1991 Hall of Fame Bowl is brought to you by Mitsubishi, bringing you a full line of award-winning automobiles. Mitsubishi, the word is getting around. By today's Duracell, the copper top battery. By McDonald's, you know the one, it's McDonald's, for food, folks, and fun. And by Xerox, the document company. Downtown Tampa, Florida. On a picture-perfect day for the Chamber of Commerce, Chris Gardaki just tied Paul Benareri. The career field goals on the all-time Clemson list. So the next one, and he is the all-time leader, still only a junior. His kickoff sails out of bounds. But that was the 63rd of his <laughs> career. <laughs> He's laughing. It's He's fun laughing when you're leading by 30. He's three from four in the afternoon. I think it's always funny when you're a kicker. He's having a great time out there. Just tied a Tiger record there. Whose record was it, Joel? Obed Arreri. He used to go. kick right here in Tampa for the Buccaneers. So he got his 63rd. He may break that record before the afternoon is over. Lynch back deep for the Illini. Legal procedure. The kicking team, five-yard penalty. Let's see if he can put this one in the end zone. 14 minutes. He's kicking into the wind. Fourteen minutes, fifteen seconds left. And the fans on the far side of the stadium have departed. They've had enough sun and band of soleil for the day. Take him by the up. He's across the 30. Squirts free to the 33. They've had enough sun and what? Oil. <laughs> <laughs> There you see that that side over there is emptying out, but in the shady side where you find most of the Clemson backers, they're still here. 
enjoying this football game. Fewest points scored this year in a contest for the Fighting Illini was their opener, a loss to the University of Arizona when they dropped a 28 to 16 decision. Came up with only 17 points against Michigan, also a setback at 22 to 17. Still looking for their first points of the day in the first minute of the fourth quarter. Howard Griffin going nowhere. Ed McDaniel stuffing the play, the junior from Fatesburg, South Carolina. And they compare McDaniel to a former Tiger All-American, a linebacker who had the same size, exact same size at 6 feet, 225 pounds. All-American Jeff Davis. He's been active, along with his other inside linebacker, Doug Brewster, who came up with a blocked punt. I wonder if that Clemson recruiter is on the telephone. He's the one who needs the watch line. With all these, this young talent, though, in this football team, Clemson. Second and ten, still up at 33. The dump off. It's back. Batted backwards. Jerome Henderson, the quarterback, the first one there. They do not make as many substitutions, the Clemson Tigers, in the secondary as the other positions in the defensive front seven. Anderson, Nunn, O'Neal, and Davis. And we can tell why now. They have done a phenomenal job of shutting down Verdusco in the passing attack. They certainly have. They, they make those, as you said, those sub substitutions on the front seven. And also, the linebackers, they've got a group of eight that all play and all very effective. Six defensive backs in there now on a third and nine. Verdusco out of the shotgun. Pressure is down. Fourth sack of the day. John Johnson gets this one. That's his second. And did he ever take a shot? Verdusco still down. John Johnson showing that 4-3-8. Verdusco very tough. He was a, a wrestler, and he really has a, a competitive attitude. But you will see the speed of John Johnson coming off that corner. As we mentioned earlier, runs at 40 and 4-3-8 and just nails Verdusco. Line they, side. Yeah, they say John Johnson a lot like Steve Atwater, and he unloaded a lot like Steve Atwater. 6'3", 220 pounds. He has a future in professional football. Forey Wells, one of the busiest for the fighting Illini, ready to punt it away once again. Davis, O'Neal, the pair, still back. It'll be O'Neal from the 40. Staying alive on the sideline, getting close to midfield. So when we return, the Tigers will have it back, their own 49-yard line, leading by 30. First down pitch goes to Ronald Williams. He barely gets a yard of the carry. Well, we talked about the attitude down there on the two sidelines, and Paul is right down there on top of it. Paul, are they having fun on that Clemson side? I want to tell you something. You said it in the second quarter, Ahmad. You hit it right on the head. They are having a ball, and it just looks like from down here, Illinois, and I've been on both sides of this field and watching Illinois, they're so tentative about everything that they're doing, even their kicking game. Second and nine now for midfield. The backup quarterback, Moncrief, in there and ready to throw. It's overthrow. Yes. The reserve running back, Reggie Lawrence, was looking downfield. And he's going for David Gatalock. So the reserve's getting some time now for the Clemson Tigers. Okay, now, okay. Ahmad, as there is a clip against the Tigers, in your three seasons with the Fighting Ducks of Oregon, did you have the opportunity to play at a bowl game? No, no, not at all. We, uh... We had some tickets one time to go down to the Rose Bowl. That's about as close as we got to it. But Did you I make the game? I wasn't the only one that didn't go to a bowl game. Paul, that's that's the closest Paul has been to a fouls. bowl game, too. We have the first foul is clipping on the offense. The second foul is 12 men on the field for the offense. They're, tr they're trying everything down there now. Don't forget, coming up next on NBC, Louisville and Alabama. Alabama over the second half of the season. Second half of the season, one of the hottest teams in the nation. We will send it out to Charlie Jones and Todd Christensen at Tempe, Arizona at Sun Devil Stadium for that matchup. And then don't forget, Colorado tries to wrap up the national championship tonight with the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame in that battle at the Orange Bowl. So it's the Fiesta Bowl up next and later this evening on NBC, the Orange Bowl. No bowls for those fighting ducks. No, no bowls for the fighting ducks and no bowls for the Citadel. 
Am I right, Paul? I, I'm going to tell you what. We, were, we went to... Uh, no, we didn't. Uh, in fact, we were never even mentioned for a bowl under any circumstances. I mean, even a bad bowl. <laughs> but let me out there's the Oregon Ducks. They have been in the bowl the last couple of years. What bowl? One out in California they played the other day. <laughs> That's called the what bowl? The one out, the one out there in California. Raisin, the Raisin Bowl. Yeah, they played in that one the last two years. <laughs> At the 35, 11 minutes left. Moncrief, the southpaw, has it batted up in the air, still floating around. And it falls incomplete. Mo Gardner diving after it. He also got his hand on the ball. So the Tiger Reserves with a chance to get in there. Tough way for Mo Gardner to end his career. He graduate with a degree in sociology. Very proud of his six-month-old daughter, Morgan, his wife, Mickey. Are you looking for young heroes? Mo Gardner is certainly one of those. He has his priorities in line, hard work from college athletes. The delay, Ronald Williams with his best run of the day. Gets it out of the 47, but they are well short, 12 yards short. The first down markers are ready to give the ball back to Illinois. Well, it's the 19th of January, and NBC Sports will take the chill out of winter. Live coverage of the Kodak Hula Bowl from Honolulu. College football's premier all-star game will feature the very best collegiate seniors, including Heisman Trophy finalist Eric Bieniemy, Outland Trophy winner Russell Maryland, plus 15 first-team All-Americans, among them Notre Dame's Chris Zorgen, Miami's Craig Erickson. Kodak Hula Bowl on the 19th of January, 4 Eastern, right here on NBC. Gardaki with the spiral, the fair catch called for by Mueller. Well, we return the Illini, still trying to get on the board, have it first and 10 at their own 19. The Illini going with their backup quarterback now, Jeff Kinney, a sophomore from Wheaton, Illinois. And he'll throw on first down as Wax is complete. Out across the 43. And Jeff Kinney's father, Jeff Kinney Sr. from University of Nebraska, was an All-American running back. A, player that I played on the same teams with during the All-Star Games way back a long time ago. Not mentioning any dates, are you? Nope, it's just way back a long time ago. Good catch for Sean Wax, a total of 61 yards. The busiest receiver for the Illini today. Kenny did play the final three quarters for Illinois against Southern Illinois. Brought them back from a 21-7 deficit for a 56-21 win. That was again Griffith. And eight touchdowns as Griffith has bounced out of bounds in front of the Clemson bench on first down. Gain of two on the carry. Other bowls going on. The Citrus Bowl, a 17-point Georgia Tech lead. Down to the Cotton Bowl, Miami. Doing a number on the Longhorns. Nothing close on Bowl Day 91. No, but, you know, for these college, college athletes, they have at least had the chance to be around the festive occasions of all the bowls on this New Year's Day. Going on second and long, off the fingertips of Steve Fagan. Anderson coming up quickly. Wheaton, Illinois, the same town that gave the fighting Illini Red Grange, the home of Jeff Kinney. 6'4", 190 pounds. He owns the longest pass play of the year for Illinois. 55 yarder to the tight end, so he's got a good arm. He can throw the ball. Sophomore just like Verduzco. Run down from behind, and a flag goes down late on third and long. So he's well short of the first down. Check in with Paul. Hey, Ahmad. Yo. I was thinking about it. I forgot. I was in a I was in a bowl game, 1959, <laughs> Copper trouble? Bowl, Arizona Phoenix. They gave us a ring and a copper bowl. Face mask. The ring took, turned my finger green, and the bowl turned all the fruit rotten. 
If you go five yards, you're still going to be... <laughs> Glad we left his mic open. <laughs> <laughs> but, Paul, you know what? We just were talking about that hula bowl coming up. Yeah, I'll be there. Uh, yep, yeah, you'll be down there, won't you? Dancing. I'm going to be a grass skirt, coconuts, the whole nine yards. You were doing a little dance when you were leading that band. Hey, I tell you, they were good. They don't follow very well, though, you know. I was proud of you. But they don't take direction very well. I was, I was wanting to get some downbeat. They gave me the upbeat. <laughs> They were upbeat when they were supposed to be down. You are one of the most upbeat people that I've ever met in my life. I'll tell you one thing, though. You know, on that ladder, your knees get a little shaky, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Third and one. <laughs> the always serious Paul McGuire. Flags, looks like. A free down as Howard Griffith has the first down, taking it over to the right side. As Clemson appeared to be offside. Well, I hope now that those seniors that are headed to the Hula Bowl know that McGuire is going to be there. It doesn't scare them away, that they don't Both have that guys. great lineup. Defense, penalties decline. First down, offense. See, Paul, they'll be all trying to hang out with Paul because he knows all the spots to go in Hawaii. <laughs> That's right. I really do. Paul's it's ready that for one, that luau. It's that one spot right by the pool. <laughs> with the first down. The 38 yard line trying to avoid a shutout. Eight minutes, 50 seconds left in the fourth. Getting with Todd. Now the receiver, Pinky, the tight end. He's belted out of bounds at the 31. Illinois, last shutout in 86 by Ohio State. That was 54 games ago. Never been shut out in their eight previous bowl appearances. Dangerously close because of the great defensive effort by the number one defensive unit in the nation, that of the Clemson Tigers. And they have certainly, for everybody who thought Clemson and thought defense, they certainly changed that thinking around. They showed a very good offense today also. Second and three situation. Ball down to the 31. Looking for the little dump off. Now going down here. Thrown and intercepted. Jerome Henderson, the quarterback. The senior from Statesville, North Carolina, making the pick. But let's see. There's some flags down in the play. Offside. Defense. It'll come back. So the ball returns to Illinois. And John Makovic, one of those coaches that his expression never changes offside defense five yard penalty first down offense he is the same if his team was 30 points ahead or if the score is what it is now 30 points behind to give you an idea of how tough it's been if you've just joined us for this hall of fame game with 835 left this is the deepest penetration for Makovic's offensive unit they failed on a fourth down try on the first drive of the second half at the clemson 31 They've got it first and 10 of the 26 of the Tigers. Getting in trouble. And he's on his way down. A flag. A grounding ball coming up against the sophomore quarterback. And it was David Davis once again. He's already got one sack today. And I mentioned that demeanor of John McAvoy. You know, he coached under Tom Landry and says that Tom Landry was one of the biggest influences on his coaching career and I'm sure that his approach to the game is a lot like Tom Landry's told us that he still runs his drills very similar to the way he learned them especially for the running backs under Tom Landry professional grounding on the offense lost it down second down second down now grounding back to the 44 it's Clemson Tiger defensive unit giving up an average of only 10 points per contest over their first 11 games, shutting out the fighting Illini with 8.19 left. That was a loss of 18 yards on the grounding call. So now it's second and forever. Over shooting the running back. He wanted Steve Fagan. Well, the Illini fans remember when their team went out to the Rose Bowl. It was New Year's Day, 1984. UCLA got on top early and never let up. 
That was a Mike White coach team at the time. With all the conjecture and rumor about John McAvick leaving and maybe showing up in New England, one thing he did tell me was, knowing Sam Jankovic, he wouldn't mind working for a man like that. Okay. Gets away from Davis. Downfield, he's got Mueller. And Mueller has the first down on third. And better than 25. It's down to the 12-yard line. Good job by Kenny to buy time and get away from the nose tackle, David Davis. 32 yards of the completion. Once again, you see Kenny just dropping back, looking for a receiver, waiting on to Bides his time by rolling out of the pocket. Now, able to fire it downfield. One of the biggest offensive plays that this Illinois team has had this afternoon. Can Clemson hang on for the shutout? Find out when we come back. The Tigers have called a timeout. A little bit better than eight minutes left in the fifth annual Hall of Fame. Welcome back to Tampa. Ninth play of the drive to start attack of the 19 for the Illini. As he tried to score for the first time today. Flags on the play. Looks to be a free down for Kenny. And it's a completion to Sean Wax, the wide receiver, down to the five. Without a doubt, the most efficient drive of the day for the Fighting Illini. And it comes with their backup quarterback, Kenny, in there. Offside. Defense. Illegal motion on the offense. Penalties offset. There'll be a replay. So the Illini will finish the season at 8-4 Clemson. We'll wrap up their record at 10 and 2. I remember a few weeks back watching film of Clemson, Georgia, and then I realized what type of physical defensive group. Not many people take apart Georgia. What Clemson did this year, Fagan. Just an excellent. Unbelievable penetration of the backfield by the Tigers again, and Chester McLaughlin. Excellent all around athletic ability by every player on this. Tiger defense and they all contribute and when you get as we look at their stats right there they've allowed opponents inside the 20 just 16 times seven touchdowns six field goals two interceptions and a fumble but when you get a defense like that that everybody gets fired around on a professional level you could you could say it was like the Chicago Bears the time they had that just overwhelming defense when they won the Super Bowl yeah 46 defense of the Bears the Super Bowl. Buddy Ryan is their defensive coordinator. Over the middle, way out of the reach. There's Sean Wax. Kenny taking a hit as he delivered it. Just it has not been an easy day for either Illini quarterback. For I... Dusko, he showed us how tough he was earlier. Ahmad, he took some incredible shots in the backfield. Sophomore from Antioch, California, but as you mentioned, a former state high school wrestling champion. He kept getting back up, just like he did in the Colorado game where he took some heavy hits. I thought that, uh, you know, Verduzco had time to throw the ball. He just couldn't find any receivers open. Uh, the offensive line was doing a pretty good job, but if you don't throw on rhythm against this defense, then you are in real trouble. If you have to reset and try to throw again, they are all over you. Third and 12 from the 14. Wax has it. Short of the first down, out of bounds, just shy of the five. Short of the first down by three. So a fourth down try coming up to avoid the shutout. Fourth and three at the, well, they put him out of bounds actually at the eight. So he stepped out of bounds before he made the spin move. Fourth and even longer, fourth and almost six. They're all one to them. Fourth down conversions, the only other try on their opening drive of the second half, the Tigers 31. Kenny out of the shotgun with pressure. Good night, John Johnson as it's pitched to Fagan and dropped. And the Tigers have it back. Chester McLaughlin coming up, forcing the fumble, along with John Johnson. And Ed McDaniel picked it up. So at least for now, the shutout seems secure with 6-16 left in the contest. Five 
five minutes and 39 seconds left in the fourth. Clemson with the ball. A 30-point lead looking at third and nine. Moncrief, the backup quarterback, short of the first down. Outside of the 25 to the 26. As it winds down here with five and a half minutes left, special thanks to the great people at Clemson University and also the University of Illinois in particular, the sports information director at Clemson University, Tim Beret, and his counterpart, the sports info director at the University of Illinois, and both their staffs, Mike Pearson from Illinois. Thanks to those gentlemen and all the help that we've received over the last few days here in Tampa. Gardaki in to put it away. He has tied the Clemson career field goal record today with three. Most of the games have been blowouts on this New Year's Day 91. Nice punt again by Gardaki. Mueller back at his 25, wrapped up in a hurry across the 30. After a 46-yard punt by Gardaki, a couple better than his average of 44. John Johnson, the first one down there to make the stop. 444 left in the fourth. I'd like to thank the people that have helped us all year long. The producer of our telecast today, Larry Cirillo, providing the great pictures with our director, Dick Klein, and our production associate, Jerome Ingram. Illini, first and 10, their 32-yard line. Pierre Wilson, a freshman from New Orleans. It's open season on quarterbacks here at Tampa Stadium. Fifth sack of the day. Now, will he be back at the University of Illinois? We just saw that shot of John Makovic, his okay. third year in Champaign Urbana. And don't forget, right after today's contest in Tampa, the Fiesta Bowl in Tempe, Arizona. With Louisville matching up with the Crimson Tide of Alabama. Second and long at the 21. And it's Camino Bell. Mentioned Louisville and Alabama then. To determine the national championship, Colorado taking on Notre Dame in the Orange Bowl. But don't forget, coming up next, it's the Fiesta Bowl, Louisville and Alabama. And fitting, I've just received word to Sean Cameron has been voted the game's MVP. He got my vote early on in the game. He has done everything here today to lead his team to a tremendous victory over Illinois. Offense, offsides on the defense, still second down. Miami now 33 to 3 over Texas. Don't forget Sunday as we look at Deshaun Cameron. Join NBC Sports for the AFC wildcard game. It all starts with NFL Live. Bob Costas, O.J. Simpson, and Will McDonough. And then it's the Oilers and the Bengals. 12 noon Eastern time. The wildcard game on Sunday. Fagan on the carrier. Make it Bell on the carry. The junior from Chicago. We've got a flag on the play. And when things go wrong, they all go wrong. Offside, defense. So does Sean Cameron, the MVP, 14 of 20 in the passing department for 141 yards, a couple of touchdowns, 17 carries, 76 yards. Congratulations to Offside, that young man. Defense, he, five yards, still second down. Well, the outcome of this game obviously has been determined. Clemson wrapping up a 30-point win, three and a half minutes left. And so we don't miss the start of that key game in Tempe, Arizona, the Fiesta Bowl between Louisville and Alabama in just a second. We are going to send you in that direction, and Charlie Jones and Todd Christensen will be updating you on the final developments here in Tampa, Florida. But Clemson convincing this afternoon a dominating performance of the University of Illinois. Right now it's 30 to nothing, a 10-2 mark for Clemson, 8-4 for Illinois. Second and 11 situation at the 31. Coming up for Illinois. 
after the timeout. Well, Nebraska just got on the board again. It's now 31-21. Georgia Tech over Nebraska in the fourth quarter. Kenny and the offense ready to go to work once again. So the only thing in doubt in this game is whether it'll be the first shutout over the last 54 games for the University of Illinois when they were shut out by Ohio State back in 86. Camino Bell with the carry on second down. Arthur Fossey on the stop. Such a curveball in this football game. We thought it was going to be a offensive showing of Illinois and it turned out just the other way as Clemson came here and said you think we can't pass watch this as Deshaun Cameron just passed Illinois silly third and eight ball of the 34 counter give Bell short of the first down by a little bit better than a yard yard and a half Al Richard spinning down the running back clock continues to move and it appears that the only Illinois fans left here in the park are in the band plus on that other side over there they only got the band there they are oh no and now those young ladies are still here and they put on quite a show all right fourth and two this could be it for Illinois Avoiding that shutout. And they do get the first down. Well, to avoid missing the start of the Fiesta Bowl in Tempe, Louisville, and Alabama. In just a second, we are going to shift you in that direction. So we'll wrap it up here from Tampa, but don't forget Charlie Jones and Todd Christensen will fill you in with updates and all the developments over the final two minutes here at the Hall of Fame Bowl. For Paul McGuire and Ahmad Rashad, I'm Joel Myers. Happy New Year, everyone, from all of us at NBC Sports. That'll do it. And up next, messages from your local station.